All right. We left off with uh, Father McBride and Logan Grant um, hearing rapid rapid fire of Sabastano's Tommy gun. Um, and you guys went running up there. And then you hear sort of the, the choking screams of Alessio as you approach and you see these black masses of black roundworms coming out of his his mouth and his ears and his eyes um, as he falls to his knees on the ground. Um, he has downed two people with his Tommy gun not too far away. Um, a young blonde woman uh, and another dark haired uh, young man uh, nearby. And uh, you guys see Alessio is clutching at his throat like this. His, his, his Thompson is lying on the ground nearby. He's clutching his throat. His eyes are kind of bugging out of his head as these worms continue pouring out of every orifice in his body. And he just slumps over. Um, and he's obviously dead at this point once you guys arrive uh, and get close enough to him to see him. Um and you're so you're looking at these two bodies not too far away lying they're just peppered with bullets there's just blood everywhere uh there's these pools of blood forming over there and that's when you hear not too far away in the distance the creaking sort of the ominous creak of the uh trap door that leads down into the caverns opening from behind do i have eyes on the trap door no you don't it's a very kind of uneven rocky shrubby overgrown terrain here so it's kind of hard to see more than 30 or 40 feet beyond where you are in any direction you know that looking ahead towards where these bodies are lying is where, where the stones are they're about 40 yards away and you can see not too far away also the the uh fuse for the bundles of dynamite that you guys had set on the stones which leads back to where where the trap door is the trap door is probably about another 20 25 yards behind where you came from when you hear the creaking of the door opening okay um <clears throat> what i do is i say father grab the tommy gun i'm gonna go light the fuse and shoot at whatever's coming out of that hole and i run up all right so mcbride sheathes his cane sword and goes over and picks up the thompson as you're running back uh, to the trap door, you see a blur of movement through the uh, through the undergrowth towards where the uh, trap door is. There's something moving back behind those bushes over there to your left. Um, and then out of the corner of your eye, you see more movement over to your right. I shoot at the uh, the stuff in, at the left with the AK. Hell yeah! Okay. Unannounced targets. All right, this is blind shooting, by the way. Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to need is a uh, rifle skill roll, and uh, you're going to have at least one penalty die. What's your rifle skill? 65. Nice. All right. At this point, Kyle, you're gonna have since you're kind of blind shooting, you can't really see your target. You're just you're just spraying where you saw some movement. You're gonna have two penalty dice, and you're gonna need a hard success to hit anything. Okay. All right. So it's kind of like three levels of difficulty there. So go ahead and roll for that. So in the minus two. Is a fail. Yeah, so it's going to be your highest roll, which is a 92. And uh, your dexterity is... 40. 40, so you're going to... It's, you're firing basically four shots in a, in a volley or a burst. Okay. okay, so that's your first volley. You can fire up to um, 20 rounds in one round of combat. So essentially we're looking at, you know, five up to five volleys if you wanted to. However, this next volley is going to be just as difficult, uh, if not more. 
The more well, volleys I'm, you fire, the more recoil there is, and so on and so I'm, forth. I'm going to hang on to my rounds. I just want to start keeping heads down. Can I um, shoot over to the right as well? Give them oh, some love? Oh, so you're looking to do, like, suppressive fire, basically, huh? Yo, yeah. I just want, like, we've got people moving around us. Like, I just want them to know, like, moving yeah, their own peril. Yeah, that's kind of a thing. Basically, what suppressive fire does, you know, mechanically speaking, is it forces those who you're shooting at or at least in the general direction that you're shooting at to use a jump for cover dodge kind of thing which would which would disallow them from uh, making an attack on their turn kind of thing but we're not even really necessarily an initiative at this point all right so, so you're like doo -doo 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 -doo. just kind of in both both where you saw both the movements right yep roll again yeah go ahead and roll for the second volley same thing, two penalty dice. Oh, baby! Oh, when he gets a hard success. Nice, dude. 23, 15, 20. Yeah, so he rolled a, a 23. Um, so that was four bullets in the volley. So when you hit with a volley, you hit with half the bullets. So that's two bullets. I okay. believe it. 2d6. For, yeah, yeah, so roll 46. Plus two. Gotta love Kalishnikov. Ooh. Die, snake, midget, monkey people. Or, or other witches. Other, other witches. All, right. <laughs> All right, so you hear this high pitched, like croaking, crying sound coming from the bushes over there. Um, and you see some more movement, and, and it looks, and you hear kind of a thud or a thump as something hits the ground over there. Apparently, you hit something. Okay, great. Good job, man. At this point, I need you to make either a listen or a spot hidden. I also cry out, Father, spray and pray. Yeah, you look over your shoulder, and you can see Father Bri McBride kind of coming up the rock, rocky escarpment below you, and he's climbing up. He's got the Thompson with him. Okay, Which, what am I rolling? Pouring down his face. Oh, listen. perfect timing. Perfect timing. So I'm rolling listen. Either listen or spot hidden, whichever is better for you. Uh, spot hidden. I'm going to dip out for just a minute, but you guys keep playing. Okay. Nah, didn't make it. Okay. Ooh, they're fast. All right. Suddenly, out of the bush, you're you're kind of like doo -doo 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 to your right, like this, and you hear the sound, and you kind of like ah, die, fucker! And out of the corner of your eye, you see some movement to your left, and coming out of the bushes at you is one of these short, uh, kind of mottled color-looking serpent thing, um, and it leaps up at you. Same thing that was uh, coming at you the other day. Oh man, my favorite. But he had to jump out of the way, right? Or I guess maybe he has like extra rolls or something. Well, we weren't technically in the initiative at that point. Okay. Uh, but these things are very quick, as you can see, as a dexterity of 70. But I have my gun ready at the ready. Isn't that worth some sort of initiative bonus? 40, let's see, 40, 50, you would be at 90. For the next thing here, let's see. Is Tom on? No. Yes, I'm waiting. Oh, yeah, yes. Okay. Oh, awesome. Perfect timing, Tommy. Perfect. I shoot, but I'm waiting for my initiative. <laughs> yeah, so we was pretty, you know, we, you know where we left off, right? Yes, we're still on top of the mountain, and the lizard people came out of the, the, the uh, door and the right. floor, I assume. Right, and Logan's like, McBride, get the gun. He's pointing to the Tommy gun on the ground next to Alessio. Oh, I already picked running. that up. Yeah, I he, picked that up and reloaded it. Okay, and, and he goes running off towards the uh, the trap door. Uh, and it's kind of up this rocky escarpment a little way, so it's kind of rough going. But he gets a little ahead of you, and you see Logan, he opens fire up there with this AK-47 that he's got. And you're, okay. you're right behind him, okay? What about the um, pound of mag? Is it still breathing? Yeah, Alessio's dead. Uh, and he's and this bot his body has these black roundworms, masses of black roundworms coming out of every orifice in his body. Okay. Got it. 
All right. All right, let me put... Uh, made the wrong guy there. Um, essentially, what happened, Kyle, is he um, surprised you. Okay. But you'll get to go right after he does. Okay. If you would have made your roll, you would have been able to go on that 90. I gotcha. <clears throat> um, so, basically, he's coming at you with his fangs. All right. All right. I'm going to dodge this fucker. Let's see what we got here. He's How many two. are there? Just well, there was two. I killed one, I think. <clears throat> Who knows how many there are? All I knew is that there was movement to the left and the right, so I sprayed to the left and I sprayed to the right. I whatever I hit on the right kind of like made a noise and thud to the ground. I did 15 points of damage. I hit it twice with two bullets, and then you hear me yell, "Father, spray and pray." <laughs> I'm going to change up the music here a little bit. Pray and pray. Are they all coming out of the hole, or are they already up there? You they don't know. They came out of the hole. Yeah, you're still a little ways away from the trap door, and Logan saw some movement to his left and to the right, so at least apparently at least two of them have come out, um, and they're up here. At this okay. point, you guys, you, you start, some rain starts falling, some light rain, and you hear some thunder uh, in the distance. Not too far distance, actually. We need to light the charges, Doc. We gotta light the charges. So, this thing's uh, coming at you, Kyle. So you you have a choice. You can either fight back, dodge, maneuver. Um, what's your dodge? What's your brawl? I'd rather dodge. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna dodge. Okay, go ahead and roll dodge. Good. You got a regular success with the bite. I don't like the sound. Oh, no, I'm, no, I'm sorry. You got a regular success with the dodge. All right, so you kind of turn twist out of the way, Logan, and the thing lands on all fours, uh, kind of a little more near uh, Father McBride. Oh, good. Crossfire. Okay. Kill it. And McBride, you see it happen up ahead of you and kind of above you a little bit, about 15, 20 feet up there. You see this thing, this half man midget serpent thing leap off the ground on all fours out of these uh, this this undergrowth up there right at Logan, like right at his, his upper torso. Logan kind of spins, he brings his gun up like this and kind of spins uh, and dodges out of its way. It's Father McBride's turn. Dude, I open up with this Tommy gun, man. Nice. All right. Uh, let's see. Did you pray as well, McBride? Oh, dude, I'm I'm praying. Every bullet is a prayer. Okay. And for every okay. bullet, I say a hell no. Every every bullet is a prayer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, McBride also has a dex of forty. So your volleys with the Tommy gun are going to be four bullets each. You can fire up to uh, 20 rounds in one combat round. So you can fire up to five volleys of four bullets each. But each volley that you, after the first will be more difficult to hit with. Um, and we're, what we're using here is a submachine gun skill, Tom. Uh, do you? I don't. Which I don't think you have, right? Firearms. I thought that was the same thing. Yeah. Well, no. That's You've never fired. Use. Well, you've never... No, he was using submachine gun. You've never fired a Tommy gun in your life. Well, that's about to change right now. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. So what am I rolling? Well, I think it's 15 technically, but I'm, I'm going to be uh, generous and make it 20. It's a it's a 20%. Um. And this thing's going to attempt, attempt, well, no, it's not even going to dodge for cover because uh, it's intent on biting Logan Grant's throat out. Um, so basically for the, for the first volley, Tom, at point blank, um, let's see, you get a, yeah, you get a bonus die actually for uh, the first 
burst because it's point blank uh, of four bullets. So, so click the gray button. Click the gray button. Stand by. Next to your. Well, I yeah. have Tommy gun written. Yeah, and it should be 20, not 25, actually. It should be 20%. So, wow, you rolled pretty terribly in 84, 92, and an 80. Okay, there. So my rounds go flailing. Yeah, here, hold on. Let me look at your sheet for a second. I'll fix it for you. Man, I thought that was a rifle round. That's why I picked it up. I thought that was the same as rifle. Yeah, it's a specialized yeah. skill. Yeah, some machine guns are an actual... Don't you have your shotgun on you? I was going to say I would stick with my shotgun. Where is my shotgun? 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The shotgun I got a 59 in. It's gonna be there you go. 5. Okay. So you can use your Tommy gun skills, to, but click the gray button. Um, if you want to fire another volley, you're point blank, so you get one bonus die. But for your second volley, because of recoil, you get a penalty die. So it's just a straight up regular roll this time for your second volley of four bullets. So you need a 25% to hit. Or I'm sorry, a 20%. Did I put 20? Yeah. All right. So you're point blank range with this Thompson. And it kicks, dude. You know, you're a little guy. So you've got the front foregrip in your hand. You're like. <laughs> nice. It's getting exciting nice. up here. Lord. Yeah, I believe the lesson. I'm getting my shotgun. 22, 26. That drum magazine's half empty already. All right, so you're just going to fire two volleys and then let go of the trigger? Absolutely. Yeah, I got to get my shotgun because this is not going, not going anywhere. All right, it starts pouring down rain at this point. Wait a minute. Time out. Yeah. If I kept shooting, I still need a 20. How many times can I keep shooting and try to get a 20? For your or third volley, yeah, for your third volley, you'd need, you'd still need a 20, but with the penalty die. And then the next volley would get two penalty dice. And then the next volley would get two penalty dice. Plus a, you need a hard success and then two penalty dice plus an extreme What's the downside success. Of just keep shooting other than entering the clip? Because every, for each volley of four bullets that you're firing, it, it gets successfully harder to hit the more volleys you but fire still, but, I, but i can still do i can still do all that on my initiative right yes you've only fired two volleys so far you could fire up to three I shoot, more volleys i shoot every round i can in my initiative maybe i'll get lucky okay <laughs> so yeah and plus you're point blank so that's success. Well, you need, no, 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 yes you, you need yes. to click the gray button though I'll, I'll give you the 14 that you rolled, but you need to click the gray button. We'll give you the the first okay. die rolled in that. I'll take that. Or, or okay. just yeah, or just click the green button again. We'll take those two rolls because you have one penalty die at this point. So you rolled a 77 and a 14, and it's a penalty die. So we're taking the worst the worst or of the rolls. Oh, which is 77. I see. What you're doing. I see. Uh, so on on the on the fourth volley, you get two penalty dice. Okay. You need a twenty percent. So click the gray button. Hit minus two. That's a fail. Okay. And for the fifth and last volley, you have two penalty dice and an extreme success, and you fumble. <laughs> Better <than> duck, Kyle. <laughs> What's that? You might have to duck. I got a fumble. Dude, it's getting loud up here. You know. It's all good, baby. You're trying to lay down the lead. Trying. What else? What else can you do? Exactly. Pick up my shotgun next round. Okay. Either one of two things are going to happen right now. Either the gun's going to jam, or if Logan can't make his luck roll, Logan's going to take a bullet. No, I think I jammed him because I, I don't know how to shoot it. That's why I'm shooting so bad. I jammed the thing. I didn't. It was all messed up. It was me. My bad. My bad. Well, it, but Thompson jams on a 96, but you rolled a 98, which is technically a, since your skill is under 
The 98 is technically a, a fumble. So, Logan, roll your luck. No, oh, my luck sucks, man. Hey, wait, do we get to roll for more luck points before we do this? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, the DM's out to kill us tonight, man. What is he doing? All right, uh, it's a total no. All right <laughs> here's, the, here's the commercial break while we do our... <laughs> uh, okay, I can use every little last luck point I can get. So let me, let me uh, do that. All right. All right, everybody do their skill checks and their luck checks real quick. Dun, 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 dun. We'll All right, I failed luck. Before Big the surprise there. There you go. Did you make luck? Hold on. No, I, I mean, I got the improvement to it. Nine. Yay. That's a big. Do I roll the green one, right? You the can roll dice? your. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can use the green die. And you can roll your skill checks, too, if you have any skills checked. So I, I don't think I my luck anything anymore. last time. 1d10 for luck? Yes. And by the way, Lee, I, I increased. I, I rolled for both of yours already, and both of them increased. Oh, okay, so I'm good. Yeah, I think you have okay, okay. history and occult, I think, are the two. That Ooh, you... nice, man. Did, I, did, did you do my luck? No, I didn't do your luck. Okay, okay, cool. You can do that. All right, I just did. Oh, Sweet. father gets 10 back. Tom, boom. Need it. Dang, dude. Oh, no, that's never mind. So, like I said, I'm totally if, if, Logan, if Logan can't make his luck roll, he's going to take a bullet. Well, I was successfully dodging before. Can I dodge this bullet too i'll allow that but you're giving up your next action okay so first luck you you hear the you hear the tommy gun go off like right behind you um and you see the father you can see the casings like fly and, and he's just out of control he's, he's trying to you can tell he's like trying really hard to hit the thing you know right in front of him <laughs> All right, so luck first. Let's see if I do the luck thing. There's like rock dust and shit flying everywhere. No, nope, I'm like, holy shit, he's going to shoot me. And so I'll roll my dodge. Okay. Dude. Uh, don't oh. make it. Ah. Uh, what? Now, for my dodge, can I use luck? <laughs> what did you expect, Tom? I expected to kill this. You couldn't have possibly expected to hit this thing. Remember, you remember it was like you fought. You had fired two, two volleys. Did and, we just you, lose? To, oh, there's Tom. Okay. Tommy, you, Tommy had fired two volleys, and he kind of paused for a second. Like, should I keep going? He's like, Yeah, I'm trying to kill this thing. Um, Logan, you take five hit points damage. Ugh. And uh, <laughs> put the machine make... gun down, father. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to make a constitution check. You back? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I lost you guys. I'm sorry, I lost you. What happened? Chit, chit, chit. chit. The TV uh, game. Uh, Logan failed. He failed his he luck roll and he failed his dodge roll. You shot Logan, Tom. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so constitution roll. Sorry, Yay, I made it with only one slug, like, like. Luckily. Uh, yeah. It's all right, Tom. Dude. It right. happened. So what, man? We're fighting. It should so, happen. So right. Luckily, Let's it wasn't going. Head Back head on the horse, baby. Keep shooting. All right. Baby. Friendly, fire. Friendly fire is a part of college. Hey, it's a, it's when does that dynamite move. go off, dude? That we dynamite. Like the dynamite. You haven't lit it yet. The fuse is nearby. Oh. Logan, Logan saw it when he was standing over Alessio's body, kind of over there in the shrubs. It leads yeah, back. Yeah, but then these, then these things appeared. Now, so it's like, we, I, that was one of the other things that shouted when you weren't around. It was like, we've got to light the fuse. Oh, I thought we lit it, dude. I thought that thing was going. It was like, uh, it was like shh, we only had like minutes left to spare. I let it last game. I don't remember that you lighting it. That fuse is going. What's I that? I don't remember you lighting it. Oh, absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Like because it was going to like take a couple rounds. It was going to like take six rounds or something. Okay. All right, it's lit. Um. All right. All right back so. to back to the scene. Stop shooting the machine gun, father. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, we're to Logan. So so Logan's like stop. Up and, and you can see he took took a bullet in the shoulder. It's the lightning, and thunder. Exactly. Yeah, I know. That was my awesome. archaeology soldier. Uh. 
<laughs> this thing on the ground nearby you guys, like I said, it's only about three feet tall, but it's down on all fours. It doesn't have any clothing on or anything, but it has sort of this mottled green looking skin. Its hands are uh, kind of creepily human-like with just sort of vestiges of claws on the tips of its fingers and, and feet. Um, it's got kind of this longish neck with this diamond-shaped serpent-like head um, with these slitted, you know, yellow eyes. And it's hissing something at you in some kind of weird uh -oh. language. Kill it, it's um, big as well. Um, but it, Shut it, 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 up. Like, it looks like it's preparing to spring. It's kind of looking back and forth between the two of you. Um, so, so Logan, you're kind of busy on your turn, you know, getting out of the way of uh, the father's gunfire. He lets go of the trigger. Um, you Really, all you can do right now is just, like, move or maneuver or say something. You've already said, you know, stop yeah. shooting the machine gun. <laughs> all right, I'm going to maneuver, uh, try to just, you know, get myself away from this so it's harder for him to get to me, you know? Right, so you can maybe, you know, kind of lower your AK and you're trying to get a beat on this thing as you're yeah. backing away from it. Familiar territory. All right. It's this goddamn uh, snake people again. <laughs> this thing leaps at you, Father McBride. Hold on. Oh, um, Lord be with you. The snake person? That's not the Father no, McBride they... I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, McBride, you can either... This thing's look... You can see it, like, turn towards you, and it's about to leap on you. You can either fight back, you can dodge... Um, or you can maneuver. Um, can I dodge? Yes. Can I dodge and pull out my shotgun? And just to be clear, you guys, a that's maneuver right. is any kind of combat maneuver that's not intended to do damage to the thing, like either try to grapple it um, or shove it, uh, you know, get it in a hold, something like that, or, you know, anything anything that's not intended to do damage. Think of, think of maneuvers as just kind of like wrestling maneuvers, you know? <laughs> okay, oh, good, okay. I'm, 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 think of a wrestling move. Exactly. No, no. Here's my wrestling move. I want to the grab him by the collar. Okay, I'm grabbing him by the collar. Well, he has I'm no collar. My leg, and I'm not wearing any clothes. Oh, well, no, no. Just, just bear with me. I'm, I'm describing okay. the wrestling move. Okay. okay. And then, then, then we'll make it. Happen. I'm grabbing him up by the shoulders, the collar, right at the shoulder area. Yeah. My foot's going in his groin, and then I'm leaning backwards, and I'm doing a roll, so he rolls over me, and I'm trying to roll him off the edge of the cliff over the side of the mountain. There's no cliff. That's no. what I'm right. Oh, I mean, that there's, close? Okay. There's, there's kind of a steep, rock, steep, rocky hill kind of leading down to where the stones are, but it's, it's not that steep, you know. But you could try to can do I, a, you could do a kick can throw. I, can I try to kick throw him down to where the dynamite is? So when the dynamite blows up, he goes with it. No, I'm that's trying still, to get that's, him. A, that's a good forty or fifty yards away. The stones are. They're they're out of sight at this point. Okay. You're now cradling. You're now you're now cradling him. You guys are kind of in the area between the stones. <laughs> you're, you're in the area between the stones and the trap door. Father McBride spoons the serpent guy. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull him behind him, and I'll pull out my sword, and I'll bring it to his neck and say it like cut his head off. But that'll be next round. Well, actually, it's attacking you. So you have an option to either fight back, dodge, or maneuver. Um, you know what? I'll be nice. If you can make a uh, dexterity check, I'll allow you to kind of just drop the Thompson and pull out your cane sword. Okay. Like real quick, you know. If you they can make a dex, if you can make a dex roll. Otherwise, you're gonna have to do something else. Got bare it. Got bare it. hands, or you could club it with the fucking Thompson. Success. Nice. Ooh. All right. Doing All right. So you let, you let go of the Tommy gun. You kind of fumble for a second for your cane sword and shing. You got your cane sword out. What are you doing? You're going to fight back. You're going to dodge. Or you're going to maneuver. I'm going to cut its head off. All right. So roll uh, fighting brawl. <laughs> or no, actually, there's the three options. I'm just going with cut his head off. It's your sword skill, Tom. Got it. Ooh, it gets a hard success. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hmm. Got you get a regular success. success. 
Need you to make a constitution roll, Tom. How many points did they... Oh, I can't use luck. God damn shit. I'll, I'll tell you after your constitution roll. I, I, need an ex, I need an extreme success on your constitution. I got yeah. any success. Luck? <laughs> can't you use luck in combat? No, for the constitution roll. I, I don't know. What did you tell me? Um, yeah, you can use luck for constitution, but you would need, let's see, for an extreme success, though, you need a 25, so you need to spend 25 luck points to do that. Oh, shit, I don't have that many. Oh, I'm sorry, for I'm extreme not... success, you need a 10. Oh, I have that. Okay, what happens if I make it? What do I get? No, no, What's no, no. Gonna I mean, you need a 10, a result of 10, so you would have to spend, you rolled a 50, so you have to spend 40 luck points. Oh, point. okay. Not so an you're, option. Got you're it. fucked. Yeah, I'm fucked. <laughs> All right. Okay. Father McBride. Yes. Oh my goodness, you have six hit points left. Yes. Logan, to your horror. You God see damn you face. guys. You see Logan, his <laughs> eyes get real wide and he drops the Tommy gun, pulls out his cane sword and you see the glint of the silvery metal. Shing! Like this, and the thing leaps on him, and you see its jaws clamp down on Father McBride's throat, and blood comes gushing out of his neck. Oh, boy. All right, well, fuck you, Snake Man. What are you doing? I light, him, I light, I light him up. He's right on top of Father McBride. Yeah, well, I, I think McBride is... Uh... Seeing his creator kill this thing. Yeah, uh, and, yeah. And, just, and just to be clear, like, uh, so normally if you didn't have a major wound, Tom, you would be unconscious right now. But Got since it. you are, since you already had a major wound, yep. you're now you're now dying. You're not dead, but you're dying. So you I'm you're going to requ I'm going to require a Constitution check every round until somebody oh. does a successful first aid on you. That again. Oh my god. Okay. Alright, so so you're firing your AK. At point yeah. blank range, you're gonna get a bonus die for the first need to roll. Roll. Okay, I need to re-roll because I rolled the uh, wrong thing there. Yes, yeah, the gray die. You're point blank, baby. So we're looking at plus one. That's a hard success. Okay. So two rounds hit it. So it's a 4d6. Plus two. All right, so McBride's screaming at this point. It kind of, it's kind of a gurgly scream because he's got blood coming out of his neck. Um, and you're like, <laughs> you fucking shoot this thing, and you know the impact of the bullets kind of send it, you know, flying off Father McBride, and it's lying on its back, kind of its legs are, and arms are twitching. It, it looks dead. Or dying, um, and, and McBride is kind of lying there. His eyes are kind of fluttering, and his, his his hands like up to his neck, <laughs> kind of like Alessia. What's up with all the I, neck? I, 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 I run to him and I give him first aid. All right, let's see if you can do that. Oh my god, McBride, give me a Constitution check. Stand by. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Corso. So you've, you've made your way upside, up the side of Craig Doob um, after being attracted to uh, the mountain by this huge explosion. And upon arriving, uh, you found this, what appears to be like an old stone cottage just blown to smithereens. There's like smoke and it's on fire and shit. So you made your way up to the side of the mountain once you get almost to the top you hear this huge explosion two of them actually in rapid succession boom boom then you start hearing this gunfire and uh by the way kyle at this point at about this point is when the dynamite goes off okay and, and it just it shakes the ground you know and you can you, you know you feel the concussion uh from the blast Corso, 
Christ, man. It's mayhem up here. Mayhem. Yeah. Corso, <laughs> you get up there and uh, you can see these the standing stones. Um, two of them are, you know, blackened and you can see the, the ground and grass in, in, uh, in the area surrounding them is, is on fire. And, and you, you look up and there's a sort of a incline, this, this rocky step that, that goes up and there's all this kind of under, undergrowth and, and scraggly looking shrubs leading up. And you see two men, um, well, one man really um, up there in kind of dark clothing not too far away. And uh, you also see a couple of bodies uh, lying about halfway between you um, and these men up on the, the hill up there. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll hail the, the man I see. All right. Logan, um, so you're you're looking at, at Father McBride. You're kind of crouched over him. You kind of... You, you just you drop your AK, and you're trying to stop the bleeding, but it it's his, his jugular, okay, and the blood's just and his eyes stop fluttering, and he just he goes still. So, am I up there yet, Sean? At that moment, you hear a shout from below, and you you rise up and you kind of look, and you see a figure uh, not too far away. Um, down towards the base of the hill. All right. I'll grab the AK and uh, I'll like, we need help. So I respond. I'm like, I'm a doctor. All right. So I you're running. Quick. Yeah, he's I running up the up hill there, as dude. fast as he can. I sprint up there, dude. I hope you brought some blood with you and a tourniquet for this dude's neck. I have my doctor bag with me. I, I can tell you that much, man. He's dying. He's dying. And I'm, I'm like scanning the area with my. Uh, also, I, I, I pick up the, the father's sword and and, and sheets and put it on. So, so man, got, when I get up, when I get up there, I immediately see that he's got a horrible wound to the neck. If I can rip open the bag and break out the suture and the scalpel and then disinfect it and start working, man. <laughs> Try to find the. All right. Well, let's let's do a hail mary. One other thing I did lead to your character, since you are a medical doctor. As I gave you uh, some more points, I think I took some points away from something and put it to first aid because if you're a doctor, you should have first aid as well as medicine. Medicine doesn't do you uh, a lick of good in these kind of situations. It's all about the first aid. Okay. So I don't know oh, okay. what your first aid is, but I think it's about forty percent. We're gonna do a hail mary here, Tom. Another it's hail different. mary. Right. For, for Malcolm McBride. Malcolm McBride, dude. Here we let's, go, let's, man. I thought his name was. I thought his name so was. You want, roll, uh, you want me to roll the gray or the green? Green's fine. Okay. This is the hail mary to save the father, and you rolled a seventy-six. Oh. Uh, you could let's push. See how much the, luck? How much you, luck do I have? That would be twenty-six luck, or you could push the roll. Oh man, a push roll. I mean, how much worse could it get? He's gonna die. I was gonna say, I'm I'm dead or I'm dead. I burn. I burn burn the luck, man. Really? Burn the luck, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If there's any time you want to burn luck, now would be the time with the old. Yeah, uh, Yeah. I burn the luck. But is is this gonna become like a weekly thing, Tom, where everybody has to burn like their luck to save Father McBride? (laughs) You know what? (laughs) We have to get Father McBride back this the heel at the church and leave him be for a while and let his mason buddy come on out because we've got yeah. something here so i was reading it let's just get father mcbride back to the to the pope we, and- we've got to let him heal up long enough for us to build our luck back up so we can save him again exactly <laughs> the Lord of you, all the connections you've got all right so awesome. do- so dr course you got your medical bag um with you um you, you're able to to stabilize him so Tom, you're you're stable now with uh, one hit point. Okay. All right. Semi semi conscious. Um, you're able to stabilize him, but he needs some some medical help. Yeah, we need to get him off the mountain, man. Need to get him off the mountain and get him some yeah. medical help. We need to get this guy off the mountain. He's gonna die. <clears throat> mm-hmm. 
the uh, the rocks break with the dynamite blowing it up? No, unfortunately. Oh. Um, Lightning strikes. It is uh, is is Alessio's body just totally disintegrated or what? Um, no. When you were just when you were just down there looking at him, no, his his body was intact. Definitely All right. get the get the dead man. Don't leave the dead. And if there's if there's any yeah. witches, well, Corso well, says if there's doctor, any witches, we doctor, need to burn look, the bodies. You look, you look okay. Well, we've got to move fast here. Um, the witches are they still are they still there? Of John, still there, man. so you're you're collecting Father McBride. He can't walk. Yeah, I, I think I should I should and fireman you, carry McBride because I'm not as strong as uh, Ronaldo from what I looked at. So I can take the father. He's he's a lightweight. Um, doctor, we've got a dead man over there. We got to bring down the mountain, and I've got to go desecrate these witches really fast. <laughs> you mind yeah. helping out? Do you have acid left? Acid fire. I do. Yeah, yeah man. Do me this solid. Cut their heads off with a sword and burn the bodies, man. Well, I'm going to use my... Uh, so, first order of business is uh, just let's get the bodies and we'll go to the witches and I'll hack the heads off of the bodies with my blessed axe. Well, hold on a second. So, as you, you collect Father McBride... And carrying him back down towards where Alessio's body is and the uh, the other two bodies. And you hear some movement coming from up the hill towards where the trap door is. And then you begin hearing this hissing sound. It sounds like the voice of one of those things, except this time it doesn't seem to be coming from any one direction. It seems to be coming from that general direction, but you can't pinpoint where it's coming from. Okay. And then my my shotgun out. (laughs) And then you start smelling this horrible stench. Oh, dude, that's not good. We got to get the fuck out of here. Can I have my shotgun in my hand as I'm being carried? You're virtually dead, Tom. Take that as a no. <laughs> Doctor, let's get the bodies and get out of here. I'm glad we have a cleric. That's so pretty cool. You, so you can you continue down the hill. You get to the area where Alessio's body is. He's lying fight, face down on the ground. The other two bodies are about 20 feet away from them, uh, from Alessio. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll lay the, uh, the archbishop down very gingerly. He'll go over and hack the heads off with the axe and acid and burn the bodies and I'll collect Alessio. Okay. So Logan, um, you get your axe out, kind of sling the AK over your shoulder, you pull out your axe um, and, and you're getting ready to chop and out of the corner of your eye you see some movement again up on the hill and you see another one of these serpent things up there. Uh, walking, um, creeping, really. Except this one's quite different. Um, it's taller. It's between five and six feet tall. And it's this. This one's dressed in this sort of. Uh, it's it's that's really what catches your eye. It's wearing this sort of blue iridescent looking robe. Um, and in its hand, it's got this twisted looking piece of dark what appears to be dark metal uh, and it's about 50 feet away from you up there um, and Corso you notice you know Logan looking up there and you turn to look you see it too it's 50 feet yeah it's about 50 feet away oh I blast it and and you begin hearing you can see that it's it seems to be speaking uh, but you okay. don't understand what it's saying can I can I shoot at it with the AK yeah all right, man. I'll, I'll blast well, it. Well, hold on. Let me let me set up initiative here and see who gets to go first. Plus. Uh oh. 
But ready firearms are worth more. This mm -hmm. You didn't have your firearm ready. Okay. All right. Let me see here. The voice takes on the sound of what it sounds like this sort of melancholy melody. It's like a tune. This, uh, it's sort of like a quaint lullaby, almost, it sounds like. And uh, I need both Corso and Logan to make a power roll, please. Hmm. It's like a charm or something. Oh, fucking red. Hold on. Uh, what did I roll? Oh, geez. Hold on. Clear, 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 clear. 74 minus. Mm, looks like both hey, of you failed, huh? Can I, uh, can I use luck here? Yeah. Or push. Push. Push the roll. Um, no. Explain the push it I, 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 I'll, I'll burn 19 points of luck to make this. Okay. I'm at 16 luck. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, dude. Hey, uh, you want to get, uh, get off this hill alive, man. Possibly. Yep. So both of you hear this sort of soft melody echoing, you know, on the hill up here. I suppose I could burn the luck, too. You going to burn the luck, too? I think I have to, man. Otherwise, I don't think I'm going to get off this mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think you are either, man. I'll be, I'll be quite honest. So I think I'm going to go ahead and burn the luck, dude. I a short it, ride of... Dr. Ronaldo Corso. He shows yeah, up. He's, 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 he's croaked he's, on the mountain. That's 12. Yeah, he's 12 bar. luck, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so he's, calling, you hear he's calling upon all his Catholic powers. <laughs> yeah, so you, you hear this music, and this, this snake person up there in this sort of blue iridescent robe, it seems to have light coming off of it. And, he, and he's got this this metal staff or something in his left hand and he's, he's he's holding it out he's got both of his arms out like this as he's this melody seems to be coming from him the song or whatever it is um and you see another one of the little monkey midget guys come up from behind him okay mm -hmm. shoot the wizard corso don't worry man and the monkey By the way, midget, welcome to our world of <laughs> the serpent monkey midgets coming down <laughs> towards you guys. What you doing, Corso? Oh, he he lets loose with the twelve gauge, man. Boom! The pump. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, he let me shoots look the, the, he's peppering the blue iridescent robe with some buckshot. <laughs> Hope you put some money back Boom. for a new robe. <laughs> So what did I say about fifty feet? So that's probably about what eighteen yards, sixteen yards, something like that. Um, twelve gauge pump. It's forty six, two d six, one d six, ten, twenty, fifty. Right. So you're at about medium range right now. Just just outside of short range with the shotgun at fifty feet. So what that's going to do? It's going to give you a penalty die to hit. Okay. Um, oh, and, and I did want to look too. I believe it is one shot per round. Period. It is. Yeah. 
All right, so what's your target? Uh, blue iridescent robe, man. I'm giving okay. him buckshot, man. Yeah. All right, so click the gray button, and you get minus one. All right, so you get a 95. Don't quite hit. What's Logan doing? I'm going mm. to shoot at the uh, one burst at the uh, iridescent robe man for mm -hmm. sure to start with. Okay. And that's, let's see, I've got, uh, it's 100 yards range with my yeah. AK, so. Yeah, you're within kind of short range for the AK. So just so a regular. Yeah, so the, so the first burst is just going to be uh, straight up. Well, no, just go ahead and keep rolling the gray, gray dice. It will uh, attempt to dodge, though. Oh, yeah. 32. Let's see if he can do it. Mm. So what that's going to do, it's going to give you a penalty die since he's jumping for cover. Oh, which makes a difference because it minus one is a fail. So the thing, as it, as the shotgun blasts start going off, you can see it, it, it scrunched down and kind of move back behind these rocks. I mean, you miss it with the first burst. Okay, going to shoot at it again. Yes, you're going to have two penalty dice for the second uh, burst. All right. Four, four. I believe you only have four more rounds in your magazine. Oh, no, it's a 30-round magazine. Two penalty dice fail. It's a 78. For the third volley, it's going to be two penalty dice, and you need a hard success. You're getting an extra penalty die because he's he's do he's basically dodging, jumping for cover. All right, well, I'm gonna try to get him anyways. Nope. Yeah. And then the next one would be uh, two penalty dice plus an ex and an extreme success to hit him. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold. All right, I think you've got one, two, three, four, five. I think you get ten more rounds in your mag. Okay, yeah. All right, Father McBride, you're kind of conscious. You're very weak, but you are conscious. Conscious enough to pull out my shotgun and aim it at something, or no? Yeah, I'd give. I'd let you prepare to fire at this point. Yeah. I mean, uh, I do whatever I. He I braces whatever the I butt of the shotgun up against a rock. Yeah. Exactly, and and I will aim it at the lizard guy, and I'm praying with everything that I've got. I am opening up, man. This is it, pull, Lord. He if pulls. He pulls. He pulls the shotgun trigger with the. If he had it with him, he'd pull it with the finger of Saint Jude. Here's the problem, though. Um, it's a sawed-off shotgun. It's he's way out of range for a sawed-off. I mean, you know, the the other the midget monkey guy, he's about forty feet away. Um, still, he's he's out of range for the sawed off. Oh wait, 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 wait. I mean, max range for it's about thirty feet. He'd have to get a little bit. The the little guy would have to get a little bit closer for you to be able to even Matt, hit him. Uh, father doesn't have a sawed off. It's a regular shotgun. No, that was the doctor. No, we're talking about I have father. Twelve doctor. No, you have a sawed-off shotgun. It's a sawed-off okay. double barrel shotgun. I'm pretty sure. The same shotgun yeah, you use. Was... Yeah, it's the same shotgun you used before. Yep. And uh, like, you have to wait for the little guy a little bit closer to be able to hit him. All right. So okay, so I sit there pretending you I'm could... dead. Okay. Oh no, go ahead. What were you gonna say? You you could take cover. I mean, you you can move or maneuver yourself and get into a position where. You know, you can shoot at it when it gets close enough. Taunt it, uh, Tom. Taunt it. Taunt it. I'll take cover and guys. I'll prepare myself. <laughs> Taunt it. What's he going to do? Like flail an entrail yeah. at him? Yeah. Like and push I, himself up, his bloody self up. <laughs> absolutely. Like, come, on, come on, bitch. And I brace it. You've lost a lot all of my blood. strength and all my energy. There's blood everywhere. 
I'm yeah. racing him up on the rock. I'm like, just come, you know, like, oh, Lord, yeah. bring him towards me. Let me get win this kill in your name. And I started yeah, you know, going through the rosary. <laughs> it is getting closer. Okay. In your name, thy will be done. Exactly. On earth as it is in Snake Hill. All right. Dominus ominous, 12 gauge. <laughs> At this point, you see the the little guy, the serpent monkey midget one. He disappears behind this rock, and you see him. He emerges from behind it, behind these shrubs and stuff. And then you don't see him anymore. And you're looking up there. Last time you saw the guy, the one in the blue robe, you don't see him anymore either. Um, the rain continues to, it's coming down hard now, and there's lightning strikes all around you. The ground is turning into mud. There's a bit of a chill in the air, uh, enough chill, actually, to where you can kind of see your breath a little bit as you're breathing. So, so Logan, you've got your AK, you're like pointed at it, you know, with your sights, and you're not seeing anything up there, no movement or anything. Corso, you've got your shotgun. You guys are looking up there. You get the water coming down your eyes, and you're not seeing them. All right, man. Well, mm. let's bug right, out. Man, I'll, uh, yeah, man. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll grab Alessio's body and shake it off. You know, use the rain to clean it and drag it out of the muck. Yeah, the worms right, are no longer coming out of his body. Yeah, I'll, I'll shake it. I'll shake the body off and use the rain to kind of clean it. I get um, back to chopping witch heads off and throwing acid on witch bodies. Alessio's face has turned like this this deep bluish color from asphyxiation. It looks like he asphyx asphyxiated on the the shit coming out of his body. I, I well, Alessio died, died how he lived. Yeah, and your, that, that's your medical prayer. opinion. Yeah. <laughs> your I medical opinion is he died. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, he's kind of he's kind of a big guy, um, right, and uh, and McBride, you're able to get up on your feet, but you're you're pretty rough, dude. This, you know, especially okay. with your gimpy leg from jumping out that window a while back. I'm using my cane conveniently. Okay, and I limp limp uh, over to the group yeah. and bless them all, give them a hail mary. Yeah, he's got these bandages all up around his face and his neck. And you're, you're, like I said, you're feeling really woozy, McBride. You, you're going to need some help. Hang uh, on to me, Father. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to get his get your no. arm up around Logan, you know, and to have him help you get out of here. You're the it's only time priest to go. I'll follow anywhere, Father. Come over here. <laughs> we've done the Lord's will. Let us get, let us take our leave quickly. You made me believe in the cloth again. All right. And so I look, at, I look at this new doctor and I say, bless you, child. You've saved us. The Lord has sent you down the right path. Well, well oh, at this yes. point, Corso, you could kind of introduce yourself and tell him who you are. He, he would, Father McBride yeah. would, would recognize who you are. Actually. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, an order, I'm a member of the uh, Military Order of Malta, which is a Catholic fraternal order. Um, ah. I'm aware of some occult occurrences. I've had some encounters myself with a similar horrible cults. I I was in Hungary. Um, we we received your letter. Yeah, I was going to say, did the Pope letter. send you? The Pope sent you? Yes, we're 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 aware of the situation. I'm I'm here to aid you. Ah, oh, blessed be the Holy Father. I knew he'd understand. Excellent. It is all as we thought. Wonderful. It's almost like divine intervention, it huh? It is truly a blessed day. Yeah, let's let's get off this mountain. You guys get down to the standing yeah. stones, and it looks like the dynamite did some damage to the two stones that you guys had set it up against. Um, blew some big chunks out of them, but they're still standing. Um, they're blackened and burned. Um, and it looks like you caught a good air, good part of the area around here on fire until it started raining. The, the grass around is all blackened and shit too. Uh, but you get, you get, you know, away from the standing stones, you get to the trail that winds down the side of the crag. Um, and about 20 minutes later, uh, you get down to the bottom, not too far away from what was once, um, Duncan McBain's stone cottage. 
do we have a chance to, to look through the cottage really quick, or is... Um, I thought we could get that place out. Isn't that where we found the list, underneath the chair? Well, here's the deal. You're going to have to treat uh, McBride. I got gotcha. you. Let me look at this here. But technically... <laughs> Can um, I use my medicine roll? Can I use my... Yeah, let's see here. Um... Within the next hour, someone administers successful medicine. Yep. Um, if no, McBride, you're going to have to make a constitution roll at the end of every hour. So do you want me to roll medicine? Great. First aid. Yeah. Great die. You're the last person within the next hour. Someone administers successful medicine. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to take a little time here. Um, and completely stop the bleeding. What okay. he really, what he probably really needs at this point is a blood transfusion. Let, let's see what you can do though, just to keep him alive for now. Okay, so it's a medicine roll. It's a medicine roll. Yeah, a rather important one. No bonus dice or anything. So zero. Oh, you rolled a ninety-seven. Oh, dude. All right, Tom. Hey, time doctor? for the Constitution roll. <laughs> what, what about the What about the other doctor in town? Can we get him there? To McParlins? Yeah, I mean, you've got no. another. You got about forty minutes. You got a four about forty minutes before we're gonna check and see if McBride dies from his wound. Doc, um, can you which, do a first aid on me? Sure. He got shot by which? Uh, <laughs> Corso, you rode a horse out here. Okay, you have a horse. Right. Um, the carriage is there as well that you guys tethered out, you know, about maybe a quarter mile away from uh, McBain's place. Uh, but you got about 40 minutes to get back to uh, Canage. Wow, that's really going to be pushing it. Let's take a look at something here. Well, one of us may have to just take McBride back. Who's got the best? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Let's look here. Here's McBain's place. Damn it. Looks like eight or nine miles. It's going to be close. It's going to be real close. Um, horse would probably be faster than the carriage. Okay. That's the way we go then, man. Hmm, how should I adjudicate this? I don't want to just let you get to Canish because a nine mile ride in the rain across the countryside in the highlands of Scotland, no no less. This um, Sean. Yeah. John, this is where I think this is where I think the Lord actually blesses us. And this is where he shines the light down on us. You know, God Almighty sees what's happening and yeah. provides us it's it's the parting of the red seas if you will you know what i'm saying <laughs> we'll get these people to safety for they are are you know uh the chosen ones to save the world god interferes <laughs> is that what the interference of god sounds like <laughs> that, that, <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know i now i know Jim and a first, right. Jim and a first aid, it's Logan. A <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> All right, Tom, you can bet. Can I can I attempt a first oh, aid, Logan, before we we run we run the oh that's right ship back in town. that's right Logan's been shot. Yeah, can, oh, yeah, I, yeah. Can, I, can I can I first aid him? Yes. <laughs> oh, geez. Hooray! Yeah, hey. except it wasn't first aid; it was firearms. Oh, oh shit. I'm gonna heal him, not yeah. shoot him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what'll make that better? Another gunshot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there we go. There's the right roll. Nice. All right. Okay. Good. 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 All right, Doctor Corso <laughs> binds you up, binds up your wounds there, Logan. You gain one hit point back. I'm feeling much better. A little bit. You're fucked up, actually. You're pretty yeah, fucked I, up. I, yeah, I know. Yeah. 
I mean, you're, you're uh, still suffering from the death ray last week. All of you, all the I, cells in your body were disrupted by some, by mercury or something like that. Yeah. You're still pretty ill. Wow. You guys have been through hell in the last week. I must say. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So about 10 minutes later, Corso, you're like, get him in the carriage. And you, Logan, you get Father McBride up in the carriage and he's laying down in the back seat. Oh, he's groaning in pain and shit. And you, you too, McBride, you're suffering from this mercury sickness or whatever it is, you know, from being disrupted by the fucking serpent's death rays. Um, he begins vomiting back there, you know, and he goes into convulsions and shit. And Logan, you're like, oh, God, hang in there. Hang in there, Father. <laughs> <laughs> and you're fucking flying over these rocks and going through these streams. And about 10 minutes later, the rain stops and the sun comes out. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and you can awesome, see Corso, Corso's riding out ahead of you on his, on his horse. You know, you guys are going as fast as you possibly can. <sighs> you pull into the outskirts of Canich. You pull up to McParlin's house. And at, and at this point, uh, Father McBride has gone unconscious again. At first, you think he's dead when you go back there. You like feel he's got, he's barely got a pulse at this point. He's, he's gone cold. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Corso and and and, uh, and Grant, you guys, you know, get the father, you know, and you, you kind of kick in the door, bring him in there, and, and Mc, <laughs> for our <laughs> usual entrance into McParlin's. Yeah, Mc, <laughs> McParlin's in, in his easy chair, you know, with his. his <laughs> cap and he's got his pipe hanging out of his mouth and he's like he's startled as you come in you're like oh the father's pipe. been hit again because his pipe falls out of his mouth and clatters to the floor and he's like what <laughs> what the hell is going on more more of the more of the uh cult uh, member he kind of gets out of his easy oh. chair and he stumbles and course so you have to reach out with your hand and like Keep him from Brace falling him. down, yeah. And he's like, "Bring him in, bring him in, hurry up!" And they you lay him down on the examination table. Um, and, he, and here we go. Here's the roll of all. Oh my god! Can I? Can if I? I'm a, can I assist him and give him a bonus roll since I'm there and I'm a trained doctor? I'm I'm surgically. I do. Oh, I've been in combat. He gets. A, he should get a bonus die because I'm assisting him. I'll give him a bonus die since you're there. You're a doctor too. Nice. And if, if you fumble it, Lee, it turns into like a backseat driver. No, I don't. I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm not rolling. It's, all, it's he's rolling. So, I'm just assisting. No, so, don't put pressure on the carotid artery. Put it over here. Swear, what you guys swear. are doing right now is basically surgery. Okay, you're he's he's got a ruptured artery, and you guys have to fix the artery. All right, so we're gonna give him a bonus die. He's got a sixty-five percent. Okay. With a bonus die. Oh, yes, he gets. Yes, he rolls a sixty-five. No. Yes, dude. Oh my god, he needed a that's, sixty-five. That's clutch. That's he clutch. Rolled a sixty-five. <laughs> wow. Together wow. we saved the Archbishop. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Oh, oh my awesome. god, man. <laughs> dude. And the ray of sun shines through the window. Whoa. Yeah, and the angels sing. Sadly. And uh, so you guys have blood all over your hands, you know, and, and, and McParlin's like, you know, checking his, his vital signs. He's like, I think he'll live. Maybe you could do some surgery on me, eh? <laughs> <laughs> You're he not says, too worn out from saving the father. I could use a stitch or two, eh? He says, very well, young man, come over here. Let's take a look at that wound of yours. Um, you know, and he takes off the dressing and lays hopefully, you down on the table. Hopefully you'll do better than you did last time. <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't able to, he like hurt me last time. And, uh, he, you know, he, he hands you, uh, Dr. Corso, he hands you some morphine, you know, and a syringe, you know, and stuff. He's like this, this, he says, he's going to feel this. We're going to have to extract the bullet. All right, uh, so I'll give him the appropriate dose of morphine so he's nice and floaty and high. Yeah, and he takes a wooden spoon, you know, for to, you know, for a clench. <laughs> a wooden in your spoon. <laughs> yeah, a wooden spoon, you know, for your to clench your jaws, and he fucking pulls that bullet right out of your shoulder. Crip. Ah, he's screaming. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, I'm going to write that. That's going in the character sheet. Oh, so far, man. it reads, bullet wound and shoulder from fumble SMG fire from Father McBride. <laughs> bullet, bullet removed by a wooden spoon. <laughs> 45 slug. Uh, here, we'll, we'll play some happy music here now. There we go. All right, so everybody lived. That's good. It's incredible. Wow. By zero, by sixty-five percent. That's crazy. You rolled sixty-five. One, yeah, because yeah, generally NPCs don't get luck. Um, I, I may use luck for very important NPCs, like Carl Stanford, Knuckles, <laughs> Knuckles Stuart yeah. Devlin. Yeah, some of these NPCs may be able to use luck, but they don't replenish <laughs> luck like N like PCs do. Edgar At least Casey. Yeah, Edgar Casey. Well, he's technically a PC. As a matter of fact, sure. we have, as a matter of fact, I think by the time we all meet up in Colorado and play this some sessions of this campaign, I'm assuming we'll may have probably moved on from Canich at that point. Um, and uh, the Alex and I actually have some things planned for Edgar Casey, so he will definitely be making an appearance at some point. Cool. It's gonna be it's gonna be shocking. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be pretty epic. So how about we take just a few minute break here? Let's take a few yeah. minutes. All right. Perfect. Cool. Perfect. there, Tom? You there, Tom? Yes. Hello? <clears throat> I'm here, Lee. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, man. Cool. What's going on, dude? How you, um, how you been? Good man, pretty good. Crazy stuff. New job and kids yeah. What's the uh... just all oh gosh? Of... Well, he's already graduating. I guess it's Solomon. It's just end of year stuff, end of school year stuff, kicking in. Yeah. Cool. How about you, what's, man? Uh, what's, what's the new job like? Uh, it's awesome. It's I'm a really? Leap controller, publicly traded company, and so this is my oh, first sweet. quarter. To this first quarter end, and so far it's going very well. So I'm like, okay, this is gonna be this could be really cool. 
Awesome, so, man. Yeah. It's that's that's great, Tom. Yeah. yeah, congratulations, man. Yeah, um, for me, it's just, uh, you know, working at the library, dude, doing teaching classes and working IT cool. stuff. Now, what, cl- what kind of classes do you teach? Oh, I teach, like, Word and Excel and ah, okay. e-reader and all kinds of, like, basic and intermediate and advanced, you know, office-type stuff. And all that. Ah, yeah, and then also, you know, how to use the library website, how to download books, right. genealogy classes, and all kinds of stuff like that. Man. Cool. Yeah, and then, and then, otherwise, I'm working on networking and building computers and repairing stuff and keeping shit updated and fixing printers and whatever. Any any kind of you know problem with the wireless? Is this any so? Kind of, so any you kind of you You're like. Keeping there's the, it's yeah it's me it's me and one other guy that the, the guy that i work with is the admin he's the network administrator and i do all the i pretty much do everything else cool that sounds like a really yeah, cool I, gig man that sounds like a lot of fun it actually is a pretty cool gig it's just unfortunate that it's you know the good thing is it's it's through the county retirement system so the retirement and the benefits are pretty good yeah but but the um but the pay sucks balls yeah. yeah yeah but it's but it's you know i mean as far as this area it's it's that's you know it's a decent it's a decent job sounds like a fun yeah yeah it is man i get to help you know there's a lot of sweet people i get to help and you know it's generally a pretty positive experience it is a public library though so you do occasionally deal with some crazy motherfuckers yeah but you're good with that man i saw you at the yeah. at, at that store what was that store in gainesville Oh, yeah. Modern, modern age, modern, modern age. age, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, I nobody can handle a customer like you, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, dude, like, I remember so many crazy things, dude. I remember jumping up on the counter and screaming at someone at the top of my lungs, threatening them. I, dude, I read all kinds of crazy stories. I read. It's working at that I store, man. Fucking hilarity, hilarity. Place, you're right. Yeah, hilarity. All right, McBride, you get back three hit points. You still, have oh. major, you still have a major wound, though. Yeah, you got back three from that medicine roll. That nice. Harlan okay. hate on you. Yeah, that's good. Uh, but you still have a major wound, as well as Mr. Grant, Kyle. Uh, so you guys aren't healing normally. Uh, you you still need to really kind of be under doctor's care. Um, you guys are really push, pushing the envelope here. Do I get any more hit points for the successful medical roll? <laughs> No, I think Corso already successfully did a first aid. Okay. Um, and you really, it's just kind of like the old old rules where you can do a, only do one first aid. On your um, although you can help with first aid, just kind of like Lee did with the medicine roll. But no, you're stuck with what you have until, um, I believe, last time we made medicine checks was just very recently, like yesterday. So... You guys aren't going to be healing for at least another week. So I compliment the doctor on his skills. Yeah, nice, nice doctor. work. Yeah, it's like doctor, yeah. doctor, doctor, doctor. Yeah. And I thank the doctor. Give him good tidings and blessings. Where are we then right now? So we're just recovering this guy's room. Yeah, he's at you in his place. McParland's place is just outside of Canich. He's got sort of a small farm. Well, it used to be a farm. He's retired now. Um, but it is kind of outside of Canich proper and fairly remote. Well, once I'm feeling well enough, I'm going to properly introduce myself to Dr. Ronaldo. Since we <laughs> yeah. Thank God you <laughs> happened upon us on the hill. I, what were you doing out there? And you seem prepared to deal with things that most people wouldn't have been able to yes. handle right away yes. i mean well we got we you know I, I was informed of your letter and i've had similar experiences uh with cults and witches um so i'm aware of the evil uh and once i read your letter i knew you had come upon something so i i came prepared you know i need to come prepared so you well know. thank god 
Yeah. Yeah, and, and Corso does know some of the backstory with you guys, even going back to Crown and Shield and Yusufus Braun and all that kind of stuff too. Oh really? He, he knows a little bit about that, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes, the uh the military order of Malta doesn't fuck around, guys. Mm. Yeah, obviously there's something going on with this hermetic order of the silver twilight something unwholesome something evil yes we, we we do have allies in the church people understand yeah and and father mcbride you would know that the the organization that corso belongs to uh, is essentially uh, a group that's dedicated to the whole, uh, the principles and the ideals of the old Inquisition. Mm. You know? I like this guy. We have a lot to talk about. We share, do we share stories of, of, of our occultist past and all the things we've learned. And we use our wonder twin powers and we start looking to see if we can figure out anything about this disc. And Kyle, you too, because I know you've got those. We all start like, what can we find out about this disc? What does it do? Can we find anything? Or are we going to need books for that? We don't have the books with us. You don't have the books with you. Yeah, that 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 could be a hindrance. Yep. Um, and you don't you don't have the discs with you either, technically. Yeah. Um, you haven't really studied the discs. Um, there is some you know, strange form of runes. Uh, there is something written on the disc, obviously, in some unknown language. It would take some study to figure that out. Um, and perhaps, uh, you know, if, if you guys, like, for instance, if um, if Logan were able to read maybe some of the... the, the none, keep in mind that none of you guys... In the, none of the investigators in the current party have actually read any books. They, they've skimmed, you know, a couple or whatever. Yeah. If you were asked to read something like, you know, Cthulhu and the Necronomicon would be probably a pretty good source of information. Yep. Um, if you guys were able to, to read one of those books and use it as a reference or or even just reference those books, uh, the books, the books would be key probably to figuring out more about the disc. That's that's sure. our goal, gentlemen. We need to get you involved and you involved. I know enough just on the surface, but I haven't had a time to study it because we've been now killing these witches and beasties the whole time. We found another piece of the disc, and uh, so we've oh, got to keep it. We need to uh, put I mean, it together and see if we can figure it out. Yeah, I mean, I think we, 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 we could at some point retreat back to Malta. Um, yeah, and, yeah and the alternative them, would be to find somebody who may be able to help you. Yeah, and, and get to retreat back to Malta with these items and with the books and go back and, and, and see if we can't study and figure out what's going on. But the question is, right now, this particular coven that you guys have discovered is obviously powerful. Um, and there's other creatures involved here, clearly. Um, yeah, but we have this. Is, is what, we, what's we left do, here? Well, I mean, yeah, I don't yeah. know. What what you, 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 uh, did they tell me about their incursion into this into the mountain? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Tell about that there were the passages the, going down. You know, the, the, the 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 hovel down there, the house beyond that was a you know, a, a cavern with altars and stairwells and so you, rooms so full of human bones and Right. So that's not been completely I'm trying, I, I get the uh, I get the doctor Corso whipped into a total Inquisition fever. Yeah, he's like, well, yeah, oh yes, he's, he, he he is whipped into a he's whipped into a frenzy, man. He's like Pile, piles well, of human bones. Yeah, he's like, well, that's that definitely it looks deserves like more. Been, it, it, it just to add some more. It looks like somebody's been raping those bones. <laughs> <laughs> you guys actually didn't inspect the bones very closely. You just shined your flashlight in there. You really didn't go through the bones or anything, by the way. Yeah. And no. Lee, you're right; it has not been fully explored. Yeah, I mean that's 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 the, there's still this this den of iniquity that needs to be cleansed. So I think some right. people I think some people that are injured severely enough injured should take maybe take Alessio's body and grab the books and go back to Malta. Yes. Right. 
yeah and, I, I, and, and maybe a, a more formed uh, we need to get, we need to get another another member or two to to, to help clear this place out i don't know exactly. that's my know just, that's my I thought i know just a man i've got a buddy of mine he's my mason buddy he let me kill a couple of his cows to make this cool <laughs> king sword <laughs> uh, okay we'll get i can get him down here he's got some connections he should be able to keep us uh, fully engaged and meanwhile the father is going to take a sabbatical and he's going to study these books and he's going to put everything he can into figuring out what this disc does can he get the disc in the books and alessio's body and go back to malta yes that, where's, that, wait, where's malta is that where he's originally from it's in the caribbean that's just, that's just that's just a little place to stay because the the military order's got a a stronghold there, man, and that's where Alessio's family is too. I'm mm. just, or you can, or you can stay here. You can stay here with Alessio's body and study the books here, I suppose. Right? Well, actually, that's I'm that's not totally possible, possible too. Canage yeah, might not be the safest place. But I was right. going to say he needs to get out of here. Yeah, I, I need mean, to Logan. I, I mean, I Logan's like, you know, I'm pretty badly injured myself. I'm from the uh, capital, maybe, Scotland. I'm well, just, maybe I'm we just, should, maybe we mean, should bug out. If, if, if you guys want, I mean, we can leave for Malta right now. Get all your shit, get the disc, get the, and what leave. Time of day is no, it? no, no. I think we should send up uh, a couple more people up there and look through the bones and search these tunnels, man. Oh, uh, no, I'm all, I'm all for it, but I'm just concerned about your condition, Archbishop. You're awfully, you're I'm in not a bad going. way. And, and Logan is damaged too, you know, so. Yeah, I'm, 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 I can't go up there by my. I can't go up there by myself. I mean, I. You know, I'm, I, I, I'm, I need to heal. It's going to take me some time. I got to at least heal these, heal these wounds. Do you have another character on your way, Kyle? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh well, then. And we could but we I, could we could connect Bear, your other character. We could connect him with Corso. Yeah. You know, because uh, he has connections with the church and things like that. And Corso, you probably know of this man, this Ruslanovich. Yeah, hopefully um, we we sent for him. Hopefully we sent for a request for him to come. You know, definitely. Oh, you did. He's supposed to be on his way. Any day now. Okay. And I've sent word to uh, William, my friend. He'll be here shortly to help you. And I'll. He, I trust him. I knew, I met him in the trenches. I gave him last rites, and he came through. So He's maybe Logan. Maybe Logan, the Archbishop, and Alessio's corpse. Maybe you guys should gather everything up and go to Malta while we're doing our thing here, right? The other, the other three characters, and that that sounds good. Although it might yeah. be difficult traveling with a corpse. Um, <laughs> we take our so, private. I mean, well, no, I mean, you know, people. I mean, people do die, and they do have to be transported overseas so you, it would take a little bit the church could help with that i think there you go i think, I think the church the, the the church could help with that it's uh the church could help with that Absolutely. yeah he's a saint of course he's yeah i mean yeah mcbride is an archbishop too so. absolutely all right we'll get that taken care of okay um well all right that sounds you can like use, you can use his, you can use his coffin to hide all your ill illegitimate shit that that actually sounds like a really good plan you guys I, it that's, does. That's probably what we would do if we were in this situation we'd be like fuck this we need to take our shit mm -hmm. hide out in malta what better place to hide than in malta you know what i'm saying yeah. and, and yeah, get because alessio's yeah, alessio's family is there too no yeah. right you got that and yeah. you got the military order yeah get the get the portions of the discs that we found out of here uh, you know um go through everything else we have as far as you know what you know the elder signs or whatever we pass those on um the books and tomes we probably want to talk about what we want to do with those uh but the discs the the portions the two portions of the disc um and logan grant and father mcbride going to malta how long does it take to get to malta and how long get back i mean what's it's because about five or six days by steamer. Maybe actually maybe a little bit longer than that. Probably six to eight days. How long for us to heal? About that take at least a couple of weeks, man. Yeah, I mean it depends on constitution rules and things like that. But you're looking at probably a month, you know, to, to really get back on your feet. 
Okay. So that would give us a month to study the books. Oh, then. and I don't know what I'm saying. What's really good about that, too, is taking Logan and McBride and putting them in Malta is later on they could come back. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It, we're, we're actually um, almost unintentionally kind of creating an organizational thing here, you know? Yeah. Uh, with having, you know, investigators in the wings doing things in other places. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Corso mentions too. Corso mentions he's like, eventually we really should establish a, a base on Malta. There's some, there's some property there that we should acquire. That'd be perfect as a place to to have a, a home base for our our organization. I, I propose we we create a new fraternal organization. We can call it the Knights of the Resurrection. Hmm. Knights of the Resurrection. That'll be our that'll be our public name. <laughs> our, our 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 secret our secret fraternal order can be called the the witch's hammer. <laughs> the witch's hammer, I like that. Yes. And our motto can be all witches must burn. Something like that. Yeah. I don't know. With well, a picture a of a picture of a wooden duck on one side of a scale. There we go. I'm playing some church music for you guys. Just an idea, but I think that's the, you know obviously the the issue we have is passing this information and this knowledge on, and being able to have some people in waiting in the wings who understand the situation. So, all right, so let's let's fast forward this a little bit. We'll, we'll make this happen. Um, okay, so you guys collect the disc from underneath the wood pile um, out at Hancock's place. And, and it is kind of late afternoon now, so we're maybe talking like under the cover of night. Like tonight, we're going to get these guys out of here uh, with this stuff. <clears throat> and just take the carriage, um, take uh, McParlin's carriage, you know, back up to Inverness. I mean, we have beat the shit out of that carriage. <laughs> <laughs> and these horses. I give the horses. The horses, the the horses are all like, Nervous and strange now. <laughs> they get carrots. The carriage is like, you know, the 1920s version of Tom's the Beater. <laughs> yep. The sides are rusted out somehow. Oh my God, falling apart, big holes. All right. So, so, so McBride and Grant, and by the way, Logan Grant would be the guy, you know, well, I guess as well as McBride, they, they would be the guys to take some of this shit back to, to Malta to really read, you know, and study this shit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, Logan's a researcher. He's yeah. Like, he's a, he's it's, a trained it's be researcher, you know, so. Perfect yeah, one two punch with the McBride and the researcher pouring over the tombs. Yeah. And I mentioned. As long as he, as long as he doesn't go crazy, he'll be. Yeah, and I mentioned, I mentioned to them too that the, uh, the military order also has tomes. Mm. Mm -hmm. What kind of tomes? Titles. <laughs> um, I uh, I studied one. I believe it's uh, Nameless Cults. Oh, yeah. And there could be other research material there too in their library. So, you know, don't when you when you go there, you know, definitely I'll give you the contacts. Talk to the library. Talk to the people there. There's some archivists. You know, they may have some other information you can cross reference with what you guys are doing. Yeah, probably more occult kind of stuff. They do they do have a copy of Nameless Cults. Um, as do you guys, mm -hmm. um, the the sort of abridged version of it. Um, but I put up on your screen there uh, what you guys have as far as books. Um, so with Logan and McBride going back to Inverness, uh, then up through Aberdeen, leaving Aberdeen by steamer, um, heading to Malta, what are they going to be taking with them as far as these books? Mm. Um, also, the really the other significant stuff you guys have are just you know ream, reams of notes from per, going all the way back to Professor Farnsworth. Take all that, man. Yusufus Braun. Um, yeah, we, I, I think we take it all. The the only thing we might leave behind would be. Um, we, we might need an elder sign if there's a. That's what I was going to say. The star, one of the star symbols, or or the shield. I think you guys have one star stone that Logan yeah, and then, has, yeah, and, and also the shield. the shield. Yeah. Yeah. 
You can always make more. I believe uh, Logan knows the spell. Yeah. Let's leave. Let's leave one with the the group in Scotland and everything else, man. Take the with star, you. We'll, we'll, we'll leave in the Star Stone. It's easier. It's more compact. Yep. Okay. And take the shield and the books back to Malta. Oh yeah, and yep. the notes. Everything. So that man. means. That means our new characters coming in now will not be reading any of these books. We'll be waiting for the return of these old characters to come back with all their knowledge. Correct. Until they find more books. Yeah, but it's safer that way, man. Got it. I'm just saying right? that we, we have no books, though. Well, if, no... It, if it becomes a crisis, we can always send for them. If you want to leave nameless cults, you could leave, you could leave that one. Yeah, I guess we could because that's the one that... Uh... Uh, well, so I have a conversation with Dr. Corso about yeah. nameless cults and tell him, you know, like, here's the version that I'm reading is, is there, is the version that you're reading? Is it, uh, you know, similar, same language, all that stuff or. It is. It is. Yeah. Okay. Well yeah. then, then those books are interchangeable. I say we leave nameless cults and that way I can continue my study of nameless cults when I get to. Alta. Yep. Good. Okay. That makes that makes sense. So at least we have one tome if we if so we need to read or someone wants to try to do something. Yeah, man. Uh, there's what, some good right. stuff in that one, like the airy travelers in there and yeah. So, so so the Bridewell edition of Nameless Colt is going to be in Doctor Corso's possession. Yep. For the time being. Yep. Along with the Starstone. All right. So. Uh, so Logan. And uh, we're just going to kind of fast forward here in time. We're going to separate time from Canich to, to Malta. Okay. So you guys yeah. successfully get back to Inverness. You pack up your shit. You get everything together. You get your sea trunks, you know, your traveling, uh, traveling gear and everything. Alessio's coffin. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you visit the doctor, you, you know, your, your personal doctor a couple of times to check your stitches and all that kind of stuff. Get some drugs, some meds. And you head up to Aberdeen by train. Um, and two days later, you're on a steamer bound for Malta. About eight days later, uh, Logan, uh, Grant, and McBride arrive in Malta. And uh, you're greeted by a gentleman who uh, takes you guys to... Uh, the uh, Collegiate Basilica Parish um, in the central region of Malta. And uh, it's a magnificent, a magnificent cathedral, Father McBride. Um, and as you guys uh, walk in, um, mass is actually going on. You guys mm -hmm. arrive on a Sunday. And uh Oh, look at that. They don't fuck around in Malta, man. <laughs> so as you guys walk in, you know, there's this blasting pipe organ. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Logan and uh Father McBride walk in, you know, and you're escorted, you know, down the aisle, you know, to take uh, <laughs> communion, you know, with, with the parish. Um, and you begin to reflect on everything that's happened and you feel, McBride, you feel like the presence of God. Awesome. You, you feel like it's it's a miracle that you're even here. <laughs> it, it, it is a miracle that he's here. Yeah, and awesome. even you too, Logan, you kind of stand in awe, you know, of, of the magnificence of this place. This place makes me want to go torture some witches. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Very nice. So you've arrived in Malta. You're set up with uh, everything you need. You know, you're both, you're both given a residence, um, you know, like a bungalow, you know, inside the, the village. It's kind of a, actually, they, they set you up with a place that's kind of remote um, outside of any city or town. It's in this kind of small village. Uh, in this bungalow it's not too it's not too far from you know the nearest town so you get supplies and things like that but you're given sort of a peaceful place to do your research and stuff you're given access uh to several libraries uh and such 
Mm. So meanwhile, back in Canada, back in hell, <laughs> Tom, I rolled up a character. I was looking at it. Yep, I was looking um, at it. And I liked it. Here, here he is. We just need to name him. William, give me a Scottish uh, name, last name. William what? Campbell. Stewart. In, in 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 respect to Bruce Campbell. Let's see. Um, McDonald. Ainsley. Ainsley. Allen. Atchison. William Allen, I like that. Blackwood. Ooh, Blackwood. William Blackwood. Breckenridge. Bruce. Buchanan. No, William Blackwood. William Blackwood. Yep, that's it. It's a good name. William Blackwood, Esquire. There you go. Yes. Retired. Yes. So I made it by trade. He's he's an attorney. He's a lawyer. Okay. He has a pretty damn high education. He's got an 82 education. 55 years old. Born in Aberdeen. Lives in Inverness. Good friends of uh, the Archbishop, of course. Um, the only thing you need to do on here, Tom. Here, let me put his name in there again. William. The only thing you need to do, Tom, is I assigned all of your occupational points. Okay. You have 140 personal interest points to put to whatever, to put to whatever you want. And here's here's what we did. I didn't put any into accounting. Accounting is kind of useless uh, in most cases. Right. Of course, of course, there's going to be an accounting role at some point. <laughs> I'm sure. Of course. <laughs> but basically, here's what we got for Mr. Blackwood. Lose ledger book. Fast talk. <laughs> Fast Talk 65, Intimidate 55, Law 45, Library U 70, Occult nice. 65, Psychology 58, and Spot Hidden 55. So you've got 140 points to put to whatever you want. I know you want, you know, some hunting skills or whatever. Right. Um, if you need, uh, here, let's take it over this screen real quick. Oops. Oh, wait, that's the insanity page. <laughs> so we don't want that. Much. <laughs> <laughs> there are uh, there are weapons tables down here. If you Oh, actually, you know what they left off of the weapons table in this edition are base percentages. So if you got your, your uh, investigator's handbook handy, you can look under f firearms. Or I okay. can get it for you. I've got actually I've got it right here. Um, I I should know those, but but anyway, take your 140 personal interest points and put them wherever you want there, and you, you should be pretty much good to go, except for any kind of background or anything, and you can come up with that maybe before next session or whatever. Okay. There's a chance you might die this session anyway, so. True. So don't get attached to him. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Don't get too attached to him. You, you know how it goes. He doesn't have any weapon skills yet, right? No, he doesn't. He's got all base percentages for fighting and firearms. Um, if only I had a. I would, I would suggest a... putting at least a few points into dodge, maybe. Right, right as it stands, his deck half decks is twenty-two. He's got a twenty-two dodge, which is a little low. Got it. I want to put maybe at least 10, 10 of those points in there. I want to put twenty there. Other useful skills. You have a good spot hidden. Other good skills, just miscellaneous oh. skills, would be like listen. Is always good. Um, yeah. First aid, okay. first aid is always good. Um, but I don't know. Kind of think towards your role as attorney. Oh, and by the way, I did do a little bit of background. You are a pretty high-ranking Mason of the Scottish Rite. You're a senior warden, um, which puts you pretty high up the ladder. Um, actually, your uh, official title that people would refer to you as right worship worshipful master and okay. you are the you are the grand registrar registrar or attorney uh for the provincial grand lodge of inverness shire so you're the, you're the actual attorney for the the lodge you know excellent 
Perfect. A lot of your, a lot of your clients are other Masons, you know, who needs who need uh, legal services. Got or it. The, or just the organization itself. Um, and Kyle, I think for Bear, we're pretty much in order. Yeah, I just yeah. need to equip him. Okay. <laughs> you got a hatchet. That's a good start. Yep. Can't go wrong with a hatchet. What skill would allow me to use that sunny that machine gun that I couldn't use before? Submachine machine gun. gun. SMG. If we don't have any armor on him for that, are we? Yeah, I mean, you guys do have a Thompson in country, so yep. that, that's that's good. Um, not a bad thing to get a skill in, Tom. Yeah. All right. Unlikely, but necessary. But you might want, yeah. <laughs> um, base percentage for a submachine gun is fifteen percent. And then, and then firearms. Uh, HG, what's that? Handgun, Handgun, and then firearms RS, what's that? Twenty percent. RS is no, rifle shotgun. That? RS is rifle shotgun, and that's twenty-five percent base. So you can just plug those numbers in there right now before you put any points to it. Handgun is twenty. Rifle shotgun is twenty-five. Submachine guns fifteen. And you can write that in the blank spaces over there to the right if you want to put SMG. Oh, I see here. Okay. Perhaps uh, exotic firearms is a hobby of Mr. Blackwood's. Hmm. He's a gun collector. Exactly. Gotta have some shotgun too. I cannot go without a shotgun. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, they, I think they really kind of, even like Sandy Peterson when he created this game, I think he put a lot of thought into the firearms rules in this game. I mean, I've read about it. They really did put a lot of thought into it. And It's a good system. Uh, it and, works really well. Yeah, and I guess my, my point that I want to make is like using some something like a submachine gun is not something that you can just pick up and use well. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, you have it's, to have some training. Uh, and, and that's why the 15%. You know. No, that makes sense. Hmm. You got enough points, man. You can do some machine gun, rifle, shotgun, and then have a couple extra points to kick around if you want. Well, I've got 60 points left. I have a 15 in submachine gun. I have a 45 in rifle, shotgun. Uh, Check up your submachine gun, man. Going with the Henry rifle, Kyle? Yeah. It's got crazy damage. 1d8 plus 1d6 plus 3. The, the Martin Henry? Yeah. Yeah. The thing with the Martin Henry, though. It's a breech loader. Yeah, it's a breech loader. One shot every three rounds. Oh, all right. Maybe not that. Man, it does yeah. some serious damage, though. Whoa. Oh yeah, it shoots it shoots a it shoots a giant slug of a round, man. It that's reaches like out. That's it's like a That's what the British magnum. Yeah, the British troops used that in the in the in the the revolvers, those Welby revolvers, man. That's what they used against the Zulus. Yeah, it's a serious cartridge. And it reaches out too. You shoot a long, long way with that thing. All right. Uh, if you were to ask me, I think one of the most useful rifles in this game for this time period is probably the 30 caliber lever action. You know, the oh, yeah, dude. The, Win the Winchester, that's a great rifle. Mm -hmm. Is that on the list here? Yeah, it's the 30 lever yeah. action carbine. Yeah, the 30-30. Oh, there it is. All right, well, I'll take one of those. Yeah, it's a good rifle. You got six shots, 2d6 damage. And it's a Western, you know, a totally a Western well, rifle, so it fits your character. For, yeah, I think mm -hmm. it would be good for him. Yeah, and it's a carbine, so it's it's like semi concealable too, you know. It's not like a big rifle or anything. The police are after someone. Where is that? Is that in Tallahassee, Tampa, or St. Louis? 
That's in uh, Tallahassee. Okay. Somebody jaywalked over here. They're coming after him. Not a lot of serious crime around here. Dude, you're a big big game hunter. What about the elephant gun? Yeah, that's yeah, true. Well, the elephant gun. It used to be game, but now it's people. People. <laughs> the elephant gun said that's a that's a great rifle too. Which is specifically. Well, I mean, he is. I think he should probably have more than one rifle, right? Kind of a specialist. Yeah. You can carry an elephant gun and a carbine. Yeah, I, I think for your character, Kyle, I would allow some some smuggling action. You know, you'd be able to get something smuggled in for sure for this particular mission. This Thanks to the mercies of the church. Not going to let something like customs stop you from saving the world, you know. Well, of course, Got your points assigned, Todd? Of I think so. There, of course there I'm is. trying to come up with a backstory that would explain it, too. I'm just trying to think, you know, if I'm going to have these guns, I want it to make sense. I mean, I know I met the priest during World War Two or during World War One or the, or the Great War. Uh, met him in the trenches. Was a mason. Grew up in this area. Came back. Became a lawyer after the war. Stayed in contact with the pre with the with the bishop. Do I have any occult skill? Nothing. Yes. I'm pretty much. I do. Oh, no, I gave, oh, no. And I, I know a lot of a good people. chunk. I, yeah. I discuss it with the, the the father all the time. So I know yeah. the, of the craziness that goes about. And also being a Mason, you've done quite a bit of studying into the esoteric, you know? Yeah. All right. So I'm an esoteric uh, studying gun toting veteran. The law degree is nice too. I got a 65 in submachine gun. I've got a 55 in rifle. Cool. Throw a 40. Spot hidden. All right. I'm ready. Dude, I am so proud of you that you allotted to the throw skill, Tom. Uh, yeah, I just, I just thought about that. Throw is probably about time I did that. It was a sweet, sweet day. Kyle did too. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, though. I didn't put it in the first aid, though. Crap. Wait a minute. We know how important that is. Well, you guys oh, there's have always. You we have, have a couple doctors, doctors yeah. yeah. Kyle's character has 35. I'm a doctor. What's yours, Lee? Uh, I think my first aid's 50 and my medicine is 70. Nice. Jeez. I'm also going to have a 45 revolver. Are right, you still gunning up over here? Got something for long range, got something for medium range, and got something for up close, and then got something for can smell your breath. That's the hatchet. Okay. 15 yards, 100, or yeah, 1500 yards, 50 yards, 100 yards, and then in your face. This work. The father is going to, if, if allowed, the father is going to pass on his cane sword to his friend and brother, William Blackwood, because he knows it's a blessed blade and he may need it. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's the case, um, that's going to fall under a uh, different skill as well. Yep. It's, not, it's not just a fighting brawl skill. It is fighting sword or fencing. Corso. You should make sure that uh, Alessio's silver hatchets get to uh, the bear. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, they're not enchanted, but they are silver. Yeah. The base for uh, fighting sword, Tom, is 20%. Okay. 
may want to reallocate a few points there mm -hmm. if you're going to plan on using the sword. Do I have a submachine gun? No, but you will. How many rounds we got? A lot. There's, there's a lot. Yeah, there's 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 a Stuart, chunk. There's yeah. Stuart Devlin was very generous. Yeah, you got the fifty round drum, a bunch of stick mags, and a bunch of extra forty five rounds. All right, let me see if I can peel some stuff away here. Uh, we'll uh, we'll make sure we'll make sure Alessio gets a, uh, a a very elaborate Catholic funeral for his family, and they you know know that he sacrificed for the church, and we'll we'll inter him there at the uh, the military order if they have a crypt. Well, yeah, I mean they did, you, I showed you a picture of the church. Yeah, you know so they'd we'll, have a they'd have a full up you know funerary funeral service for him. Yeah. Uh, there at the collegiate basilica parish well uh if if the military order has like a crypt that there we'll we'll, we'll inter him there where you know the body's safe mm -hmm. very well what a way to die just in case man the knights of the resurrection i do the eulogy i right. thought we were going to be resurrecting the father so, uh, yeah, uh, dude, they were, we, yeah, there could be, and there, it, that still may happen. I think hey. we kind of, I think we did kind of resurrect the father, quite frankly. In a few weeks, yeah. studying the Necronomicon, you could learn how to resurrect people, man. Yeah. I mean, there, there's some sanity damage, but. Yeah. We need a guard for the, uh, for the books and for the, uh, for the uh, new fraternal, you know, location. Have Alessio there. <laughs> All right, all right. I think I'm ready. Uh, what language did I speak? Just one. I think so. Oh, no, wait. Yeah. Edu <clears throat> education two. What's that? That's your English. That's your English score. Okay. Yeah, I think I, I think I put that in there. Yep, you did. Let's. Uh, I don't know any of the languages. Let's take Logan down here and put him under investigators. Let's take Father McBride and put him down here. All right, we got a new crew. <clears throat> there, man. I feel a lot better with that that material out of, out of the country. Yeah, I do too. You know, someplace relatively safe, rather than it being buried in some random woodshed or woodpile. Yeah. Yeah, the woodpile was a safe place for a while there, though. <laughs> yeah, no. For the, for the I mean, amazingly so. Yeah. It's called a Cthulhu, man. Sometimes the woodpile just has to do. Yep. Back. <laughs> it did. And if we never came back, it would be quite a fine for the young 15-year-old who you know, goes through the woodpile 30 years from now. What's this item? Right. Exactly. Oh my God, it's 100 it's like pounds a of gold. <laughs> and gems. And, and, and a bunch of witches saying? hanging all over us right now. Oh. All right, looks good. Tom, I noticed that it um, calculated a rather low move rate for Mr. Blackwood, and I think that's due to his low strength. So we've got another kind of scrawny dude that you're mm -hmm. playing here. He's got a 37 strength, 45 dexterity. So both of those stats are a little below average. Okay. We'll make up for it with the submachine gun skill. Yeah, I mean, not that I technically use move rate very much, but it may come to play. God, he's, he's not the small guy like the father. Got it. Yeah, I guess he's average size, but he's just a... Uh...
kind of scrawny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess I do. Well, it just makes them easier to carry when when <laughs> it's down, so. Exactly. I mean, that's why I was like, I'll carry the father down the hill. I was like, ooh, a lot lighter. <laughs> yeah, he, he's got three things really going for him. Uh, Is this going to be a Monty Python moment? No. The three things that are indisputable with the Spanish Inquisition. Well, One, I was just going to say, he, he, has, of the Lord. he has an intelligence of 70. Yes. Which is pretty damn good. He's got an education of 82, which is pretty damn good. And also his power, I rolled a good power for him. He's got a 65 power, which gives him 65 starting sanity. Ooh. That, which is pretty solid. That is. So... And also with the seventy intelligence, Tom, you know that that could play into if you want to study tomes or learn spells or cast spells and things like that. Intelligence can be pretty significant when it comes to that stuff. So and then he's got the submachine gun skill. But I don't have any other languages though. So unless it's in English, I'm not doing spells. That's when you you hire a translator, you know, or whatever. You've got done it before. You can do it again. That's true. All right. I'm ready. Go, go see if Ambassador Dalaran is any better. <clears throat> he's tucked away in an asylum somewhere. He has been for, <laughs> I guess, a couple months now. Maybe he's getting better. Hopefully so. Um, the mad ambassador. And, and Bear, our, our Indian guy here, he's got a 70 strength and a 70 size. Damn. Ooh. Uh, which, gives him, which gives him a plus one build and a plus one D4 damage bonus. Um. So he's a he's a bad dude. Yeah, he's a man of few words. He also has all some, action, baby. He also has some kind of unusual skills that could be very useful as well. Oh, yep. Yeah, he's got oh. um, he's got a great dodge at fifty five. His fighting brawl is forty five. Um, he's got. Listen at 45, Natural World at 40, Navigate at 40, Spot Hidden at 40, Stealth at 60, Throw at 50, and Track at 35. Nice. Uh, stealth and Track, that's good. Yeah, he's, that's good. he's a big game hunter, or was. Now he's a small witch hunter, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or a small snake hunter, if you want to put it that way. Oh, and he also has Survival Desert 40. So he's got some, he's got a pretty nice skill set, I'd say. Yeah, he's not a researcher. That's for sure. No. He's, he's a doer. We go to Egypt, we're going to need those desert skills. We go to the uh, canyon with the uh, cursed Indians out there yeah. in California. You're going to need them. Yeah. You guys done with this page here? Yep. Okay. Well, let's go back over to the Canage page then. For a moment. Yeah, let's look, let's look at the handouts and the clues just real quick here. Um, specifically here, and this is the one that kind of alludes to the fact that something's going on in uh, California where it says a renegade missionary named Watley visited and remained with a small tribe of Indians known as the Hotek from 1837 to 1843 when he disappeared. Shortly thereafter, the Hotek tribe itself disbanded, its elders evidently having vanished or died. This tribe was notable for its especially savage pagan rites, which Watley seemed to have encouraged. He either brought to or found with the Indians a particular a peculiar structure which he called the Ark of Lactose, in which he believed had connections to non-Christian sky demons. The only other known facts about the Hotek are that they practiced the creation of Kachina dolls to house demon souls, and that they worshipped gods not mentioned elsewhere in California, such as the serpent god Yig and the horned god Shub Niggurat. The Hotek dwelt in Devil's Canyon in the Mojave Desert. Oh. And then also, I believe Logan found in Nameless Cults. Oh, wait, that was for the Loch Muller Dark thing. Um, and I guess the most recent clue that you guys came across is this letter from Carl Stanford to Duncan McBain 
It says, this letter will introduce you to Belphegor, a valued member of our order. He's being sent to you to aid you in your search for the relayed disc. Maintain your surveillance of the Americans. They may stumble on the disc at any time. Oh, indeed they have. If they find it, they will have to be taken care of. I expect that you will have found the disc soon. Your passage and that of Bel Belphegor have been arranged by our people in London. You must both be on that ship when it sails. Obey, Belphegor, as you would obey me. Glory to the gods, Yog, Sawtoth, Neblod, Zin. We don't know when that ship Do we know what the Neblod Zin means? No, you can maybe find out. Logan's always keeping an eye out for it and is reading now. Yeah, and you assume, you know, from the limited research, at least, you know, maybe that Logan did and Father McBride, that Yog Sothoth is another one of these uh, strange gods or whatever that are spoken of in the Necronomicon and other tomes. Um, and then, of course, there's this, maybe one of the most important clues that uh, Stuart Devlin found in New York. Belphegor reports no success in finding the disc in Scotland. He and the Knights of the Outer Void may be forced to slay more intruders. Information received indicates that the Ark of Lactose may be found in California. Still no full results from Easter Island. Finish. Yeah. <clears throat> Easter Island. Mm -hmm. Well... Yeah. We've got a mountain to clean up. Yep. And meanwhile, the rest of the party is going to study spells and learn about this stuff. Look yep, up the disc. Will, yep, that will be up. ongoing, and there will be some correspondence. Yep. Looking up the ark. In the meantime, let's go. Uh, let's go clean up that mountain. Yeah, I'm all for it. Corso's all for it. Get the shotgun. Get all our stuff. Get my medical bag. Oh, it's 12 sticks of dynamite. I go with my mining friend. Come on, computer. That's kicking in the dynamic lighting here. I'm going to reload. Oh, wait, there it goes. There we go. Try to zoom in on that a little bit, guys. All right. Oh, you guys are going to have to get a new carriage. <laughs> you don't want to be traipsing around the highlands on foot <laughs> i'm sure the father could put in a good word weren't we using the uh the priests of dr the mcparland it, it was dr mcparland's carriage yeah oh, or no okay. actually it was a uh, father mcbride's the other father mcbride's carriage. right yeah so i thought mm -hmm. at one point it was you guys could acquire some horses Yeah, horses are probably good. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let me look at the calendar here real quick. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, I need to get these names right in here. So Mr. Blackwood and Bear arrive in Canich. On Monday, October 20th, 1924. Dr. Corso is there to greet them. Yes. 11 days till Halloween. Gentlemen, are you ready to do God's work? <laughs> <laughs> um, we can assume that uh, the Bear and Corso know each other personally. Okay. Yeah. I shake his hand and yeah. Clap my other hand around his back. Good to see you yeah. again, Doctor. Yeah. 
I greet him as well. Hello, Bear. So Glad happy to see you. So, yeah, so happy to see you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say maybe Dr. Corso had something to do with uh, Bear's education, you know. Don't worry, Dr. Corso. I'll save the last bullet for you. <laughs> Excellent. You haven't forgotten your lessons. Right. And I pull back on the bolt and the submachine gun. I say, let's go shoot ourselves a witch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bear introduces himself to Blackwood. William Blackwood, Esquire. He wears one of those hats, you know. What I'm talking about the, uh, the Scottish Sherlock hat, Holmes, Sherlock Holmes hat, or something like a hunting hat. Yeah, like a like a beret kind of thing, or whatever they call it. You know, the Scottish version. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like a, I know like, what you're like talking about. Driving cap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, no, the the beret thing. I know what you're talking about. It kind of looks like a, it is a it is a beret. Yeah. Like the hounds too. It's kind of yeah. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. He's a stereotypical. I, I give I give Do, uh, uh, Blackwood my full name, but I just go. You could just call me Bear. And, and a crisp, like you know, wool felt suit. You know, the wool suit, and I got red hair. You know, red beard, scruffy, <laughs> crazy eyes, crazy eyes. Yeah, <laughs> crazy Not blue yet. eyes. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, I got to work on my uh, character description. I think. Uh, He's got Maybe. the tweed cap on. Oh, for uh, Blackwood? Yeah. Yeah, the tweed, exactly. You've got the visual. Oh, and I've got some hunting dogs. Can I bring them with me? They're well-trained, and they won't do anything unless I tell them to. Sure, if you want to lose them. Oh, they're good boys. Let me drag these out there. We can put these out here. Doink. It's a proper hunting party now, man. We got hunting dogs. And... Exactly. I'll bring two of the dogs. All right. I'm down with that. Let me just put these guys out here. So you guys have tokens to look at. Let me put this name. We're going to put bear. Bear and Blackwood. Bear this for a while. I know we're coming to the end of the session here, but we can get something done. I guarantee it. Um, just need to fix something here. Well, that music's pretty creepy. <laughs> and then, um, all right. Where are my dog stats? They're down here somewhere. So, um, there we go. So, Blackwood, you have the submachine gun. Yes. And Bear, you've got what? What do you have? Firearm wise. Um, I've got my forty-five revolver. I've got my elephant gun. And I got my lever action thirty. Got the elephant gun. Okay. Yep. I'm wearing like a uh, buckskin. But uh, no, I'm not actually. I thought about that, but <laughs> that probably doesn't make sense. Um, brown, brown, like a brown Mackinac coat, you know. <clears throat> you know, it, I do have my long black hair, but it's back and a ponytail. Out of my way. Yeah, Corso's got a heavy trench, black trench coat on with his black medical bag and his shotgun. All yeah, right. I look like I look like a, I look like I'm going hunting, you know. Trust for that. Yeah, basically backpack with all my medical stuff in it. So here's the thing. You guys arrive out 
at the cliff of Craig Dube, where Duncan McBain's place once stood. It's now just a pile of rubble, of course. Um, and as you know, um, somewhere underneath this rubble um, lies the entrance to this cave. You also know that there is another entrance to this cave system up on top of the crag, uh, not too far away from the standing stones um, in the form of a wooden door in the ground leads down into the cave. Um, inspecting the stone cottage or the, the remains of the stone stone cottage, the ruins of it, um, it looks like it, it would be possible to move, you know, some of this stuff away uh, to try to locate the entrance. Um, you've got Bear with you, you know. We, we do. And Corso is pretty, Corso is a pretty big guy too. Yeah, it, would, it wouldn't, probably wouldn't take much. Uh, but it may take some time. I think we should go clean a path. You, yeah, you think what now? Uh, we should clear a path. We'll start, a door. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. start we start moving the stones, man. All right, yeah, we get to work. Okay. So, and as we're moving the stones, we'll search a little bit, you know, through you know, as we're moving stuff, we'll look to see if we can find anything in the rubble. Since we're moving the stones anyways. Okay. All you really find in the rubble as you're digging are just some tattered, burned up clothing, um, some kitchen implements and uh, farm implements. Uh, nothing of note, really, nothing important anyway. And eventually, after about an hour, you find a uh, man made, uh, which is obviously man-made as you uncover it um, opening into the side of the cliff um, and as you uncover it more it's about seven feet high four feet wide um, and it's, it's a dark rather smooth tunnel leading in to the depths of the the caves here in craig do and as i said it is it's obviously man-made as you're looking at it it's not natural just as the father described it. Yes. God bless you, McBride. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, gentlemen. What are your dog's names, Tom? Mm. That's important uh, in these kind of stories, you know. Yes. Uh, he, 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 is, he is a mason, so keep that in mind. Why don't you name one of them Thud? <laughs> Thud. Thud. Yeah, that's a great dog name. Thud and Otis. One is Thud and one is Otis. This is an unusual smell um, as you uncover this opening into the uh, this passageway. And it's a sort of organic, musty, almost like a moldy kind of smell. <clears throat> and Otis, um, who's kind of more of the cantankerous one, he's the more adventuresome dog. Yeah. Um, Todd's a little shy and subdued, but Otis bares his teeth and he begins growling uh, at the uh, passageway. I heal now. And he points. I give my spit in his direction. I'm like, don't, mm, you know. <laughs> okay. Get yourself under control. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't embarrass me now. Let's uh, let's let's approach, man. Something bad's in there. The dog knows it. We know it. Let's kill it. Agreed. All right. The air is about twenty degrees cooler in these passages. Um, as you move in. And uh. After about a hundred feet, the passageway splits in two. It forks both forks left and right, and you guys have um, a sort of roughly drawn map that Father McBride made when they were down here before. So you can see what you see on your map there. Uh, apparently, there was a large cavern to the north, 
containing a temple or a uh, an altar of some sort, uh, as well as a room full of bones, uh, a stairway that led up to the trap door, and a nether dark stairway that leads down to the unknown. I say we go look in the bone room. The father had a feeling about the bone room. Maybe it was all the lost souls. There's something there we have to put to rest. <laughs> okay, so you head up the northern passage. Yeah, well, I'm I'm in favor of going towards what we know is mapped, so we know what we're getting into. Right. Or at least we think we do. <laughs> All right, so you move into this uh, fairly large cavern, just to give you a sense of scale. It's about 25 to 30 feet wide. The ceiling is high enough to where your, your flashlights and stuff, you can't even see the ceiling in this place. It must be pretty high up there. And as you're moving up, you can see at the edge of your light source there, your flashlights. Um, play upon this roughly hewn stairway leading up on your left and uh, to the north there you can see a very narrow passageway leading into a dark room all right there's a bit of a different odor in this place you can see fungus uh, growing of many different colors sort of you know some of it's uh, like crimson colored some of it's purplish and black um, there's some patches of mushrooms growing here and there moss and lichen and such there's this very musty kind of odor down here but the the odor down here is a little different there's a bit of a tinge of uh, metal it's almost like a burnt metal kind of smell very faint creatures that died from that gun perhaps Oops, what Do, oh. Does uh, Bear recognize the smell? Can he roll natural world? Sure, go ahead. Oh my goodness. This thing is giving me all kinds of problems. All right. Yeah, it's a dynamic lighting probably. Mm. Oh, it's still under Logan Grant, but that's correct roll, so he made it. You have a sense that whatever the smell, the underlying smell in this place is, um, it's organic. It's something uh, bestial, like something alive something lives down here something mm. faint faint odor of perhaps urine or excrement but you would expect you would expect some creatures you know lizards and insects for sure all right well I share that with the group. Something's living down here. In this room. So what, you were gonna, um, you wanted to check this room out? Well, that's what we're wondering now. I don't know, do we wanna go in there or something living? Well, you kind of- Fungi you know, from check, above. <laughs> shine your light in the passageway and the room is littered with countless numbers of human remains. Um, and when I say, you know, countless, I mean, the bones in here are piled three or four feet high. Mm. The rooms, you know, probably 20 feet by 25 feet, roughly. Uh, it's, it appears to be a natural, this whole area within this cavern seems to be natural. It's not hewn out of the rock with tools or anything. It's a natural cavern. Um, but they're all definitely human remains. Uh, you see skulls uh, in the pile. 
leg bones, uh, some almost complete looking skeletons. Um, some are uh, adult size. You can see some smaller skeletons. They look like they're probably children, young oh, children, geez. maybe between the ages of six and ten. Not cool. Bear shakes his head, grips his pistol tighter. And upon further inspection, you can see some areas of the room um, are kind of scattered with less bones than others. So it's a, you're able to kind of make your way in here um, and walk in here if you wanted to. If you wanted to search it a little further, like towards the back wall and such, you'd have to walk on some, some of the bones, though. I do. Lack yeah, I'll do it, too. I'll stand guard at the entrance with my shotgun and watch over these guys. So the machine gun's out, ready to unleash on. Okay. Because I know there's beasties here because McBride told us. All right, so Corso, you're kind of covering the rear. Is that what you said? Yep. I'm, I'm watching. All right. So Bear and, and Blackwood, you can go into the room and you're shining your lights around. There, towards the southern end of the room, there's sort of this little niche uh, area back in there, and it's piled up with bones. You see some kind of wooden object uh, covered with sort of a sparse layer of bones. All right, well, looks like we'll a go uncover it. It's like a wooden box or something back there. Uh -oh. uh, Bear will go over and investigate it, check it out. Okay, so you kind of you awkwardly have to climb this small pile of bones. Okay, and your feet you're not getting much traction, you know, as you're trying to climb um, up to where this wooden object is. Uh, but eventually, you're able to almost you're almost on all fours now at this point, trying to get back there to see what it is, and you find what appears. You, you pull some of the bones away to get a better look at it. It appears to be a wooden box uh, lined with blankets. Mm. And uh, it's still kind of buried in there. And uh, it's, it's about two and a half feet long, about 12 inches wide. And you get you get you kind of reach up and you get your hand on it and you give it a yank um, to get a better look at it and it it appears to actually be like a, a like a cradle like a baby's cradle. It's the baby, man. All right. But apparently, it was just you know thrown back here, discarded. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll pull it out. Can I pull it out? Yeah, you pull it out. It's just What's kind of a, it's a small wooden box that has some, um, the un, underneath of it has some wooden slats that are curved that would create like sort of a, uh, like a rocking motion. So upon closer inspection, it's definitely a baby's cradle. Uh, you even see some like filigree engraved in it and shit. Uh, with some tattered blankets nearby and in the box itself. All right, well, we know what happened there. Um, William, you you find nothing but just more bones, uh, but you are starting to see as you inspect the bones a little closer and get further back into the room um, that you estimate there are probably 150 or more uh, remains of bodies in this place mm. and a number of them are children um, even small children babies anything fresh I, I was just going to say can I tell the age of the bones some are very old and moldy and some look fairly fresh they're kind of scattered and buried in here Yeah, I think we found the baby. Well, let's well, take the... Well, you found the cradle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I do like let's a... 
I'll take the like at least one of the blankets out of there. Mm -hmm. Keep it with me. Just so if we go to the McCrays, that's their name, right? Yeah. That we can show them mm -hmm. what we found. All right. As you pull the blanket out of the cradle, you can see it's covered with these small insects. They look like mites or flea-like insects or something. Don't take that. They're, they're crawling. All right. All I, I just dro I drop it. Just make a mental note of what the cradle looked like and so forth, and then you know walk get away from that thing. Definitely not bringing the bug mites with me. Lee, as Corso is standing at the mouth of this tunnel, you know, he shines his light in there. Look, you can hear these guys walking on these bones. It's like crunch, crunch, crunch. You know, you can, right. hear, them, you can hear them manipulating, you know, you know, scattering these bones around in there and shit. Um, and uh, every once in a while, you'll turn your light and you'll shine it down up here to the north. And you yep. see kind of on the edge of your vision, this stone altar that's on that's on the map it's this dark stone um with these right. engravings on it and you can feel a breeze coming from that direction it's like this kind of a mm -hmm. uh, wafting breeze and you, and and they very faintly you can hear this sort of moaning sound like the sound of air passing up through these lower passages through this tunnel to the north probably mm. is it fresh air no, it's no. Dang. it's it's, dang. Dang. it's no. dang air. yeah it's it's, it's dang air. yeah it, it's it's human and it's got this tinge of of rot and shit. Okay, but well, you can never probably... you hear like intermittently you hear this moaning sound like a. Unfortunately, that's probably the direction we should go. Yes, it's calling to us. Yeah. Yep. All right, man, you guys done with your bone searching? Come on, let's go up this passageway. Yeah. Let's, let's, check, this let's check this altar out. Come on. Let's go. All right. All right, you see the stone altar. Um, it has these strange engravings on it. Uh, you can see amidst these engravings of what appear to be octopoid tentacles that are sort of stylized to be dripping over the edges of this altar. Um, in some sections in the side, you see what look like the Egyptian sphinx um, or, or representations of a sphinx. Um, but the, the face of these sphinxes is just blank, uh, just completely blank. Um, on top of the altar, there are thick brown stains, uh, which Corso would be able to identify as blood. It's blood, gentlemen. And you get a really close look at it. You know, and you maybe pull it, you pull one of your gloves on, right? And you kind of you kind of touch it very lightly, and portions of the stain actually look like it's fairly fresh, kind of spongy in places, mm. like it's actually been used maybe within the last month or so. Mm. Some of this is fresh, baby blood. Who knows? They've you. sacrificed something or someone down here. Lee, give me a Cthulhu Mythos roll. I think you're the only one that has any at this point. Dr. Corso has had some contact with the Mythos previously. Hmm. That might be why his mustache is so prodigious. Yeah, when you guys couldn't make it one night, Lee and I... Oh, well, man, a 17. Hmm. Not a bad roll, but no. Don't grok it. All of you guys can feel this steady breeze coming up from this passageway to the north. And the air coming up from there is fetid. There's something <laughs> rotten down right there. Here. Yeah. What's over Wait. here? Uh, a passageway. 
about 20 feet in. It looks like it forks both left and right. Well, where do you want to go, fellas? Down into the snake pit or down these corridors? I say down the windy tunnel. Down, down to the snake pit. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to find their awful birthing room. <laughs> all right. With all the flare guns that the father left us. You, you know we're going to find some terrible birthing area. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be a spawning ground you're right it's gonna, it's gonna be like you know baby snakes hatching out of human babies or men or it's gonna be bad bear is already going insane he's like oh so evil <laughs> exactly yeah Nobody wants to be the one to decide to go down there, do they? Uh, I, I think we've all decided we're going down. I think we're doing it. Yep. We're, we're going yeah. down. We're going down. Those are never words you really want to say. We're going down. <laughs> all right. Down, down, down. Do we have time to go down there tonight, Sean? Well, yeah, we're going to end here in a second, Tom. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. He just wants right. to get us to commit, Kyle. That's all. So let me just say this. <laughs> so that next next week he'll be like, "No, you already start went down, and they jump you." And it's like, Damn. as you guys stand at the mouth of this tunnel, um, both of your dogs, Tom, are, uh -oh. are very hesitant. Um, as you guys are like, you know, ever gearing up, you know, you're like, you know, you check your your magazine and shit, and kind of wipe your forehead. You guys are sweating a little bit down here. Um, the dogs get a little antsy like they don't want to come they're kind of backing away from the tunnel really yeah the dogs are smart mm -hmm. Bud's, actually, is... Bud's actually whimpering very softly i guess we could go down the side tunnel <laughs> <laughs> maybe right and, and otis is just looking at you tom like expectantly like you know like <laughs> Do I have to? Do I have to? <laughs> Do I have to? Because this, this seems yeah. not good. And Thug's right. just kind of whimpering softly. He's got his tail between his legs. All right. So I second guess and say maybe we should go down the, the side tunnel. Just to check this out first. Maybe something maybe something that will help us attack the stuff down here. What do you think? Well, peering into the side tunnel, it looks like the right hand, the left hand passageway is a dead end. The other passageway seems to continue further to the south. Probably goes in a big circle. Sure. It might, it might connect up with that other, the other passageway from the start. We've never been down. Yep. Well, I'm, I'm fine going either way. I mean, yeah, yeah I suppose we should gonna, maybe clear this. Let's clear this level first. So, sure, let's go down that passageway, right? All right, we'll keep following does this. That, does, that, does that make sense? Yeah, you know, we'll we'll see clear. what's on this level. See if we can't clear this level, and then we'll. It's then we'll evil to it. the left of us, evil to the right. I think no matter what we do, we're yeah. we're in for it. So, yep, let's go this way. All right, after about sixty feet. The narrow tunnel opens into another large cavern. Ooh, I love the lighting here, man. That's so I cool. Too. The lighting is awesome. Oh, and uh, your lights, just on the edge of the range of your light, you can see that the uh, the cavern ends kind of to the north here. Here, let me just give you a better view of it. There's kind of a pointy ending to the cavern up there. You can see it just on the edge of your the range mm -hmm. of your light there, um, and and this place is full of stalagmites and stalactites. Some of them are connected from ceiling to floor, almost like forming these strange-looking columns. And there's water dripping from the ceiling in here, and it's cooler and the air is a little fresher in this place. You can see puddles of water everywhere. Mm. And a little bit further to the south here, 
you can see in the center of the cavern up ahead appears to be a very large column of rock jutting up from the floor among the stalagmites. Any and, uh, writing on it or anything? No, it appears to be natural. Just natural granite. Your dogs are kind of out ahead of you, Tom, and they're sniffing. You know, they're sniffing, they're sniffing. They haven't, you know, given you any sign or anything. Right. Like, they don't seem to be smelling anything or hearing anything. After the big giant column here, here, let me give you a clearer view of it. Open it up here. There you go. The cavern opens up pretty wide out here. Oh, my. Continues down to the south, and you figure... Looking at your map, that passageway where you guys came in that leads to the right probably leads into this cavern at some point up ahead. But you notice a natural looking passageway off to your left. Mm. And uh, your dogs are over there kind of sniffing around on the floor. Still don't seem like they smell anything or there's no sign of danger from them or anything like that. The air smells much better in here. It's actually pretty fresh. You can see little rivulets of streams flowing through this place, like little natural streams, two feet wide. It's like real fresh, crystal clear spring water flowing through here. Want to go down this passage? Sure. sure. We can check it out. Dogs are in favor of it. Yep. about another 60 feet or so the mouth of the tunnel opens up into this small natural chamber and you can see as you're approaching the mouth of the tunnel where it opens up you see what appears to be like this really slimy shit dripping down from the entrance um, and all in on the walls in this place we don't go any further man we stop yeah, you and you stop. So you're shining your light through this kind of dripping slime in here. And even the floor is covered with this slime. And you see yeah. in the floor of this place is what appears to be a slime-covered tunnel uh, leading straight down into the floor. And it's just black, and you can see a sort of... Uh, faint mist rising up from the hole. Didn't you get some dynamite, Blackwood? 12 sticks. You want to light a couple and drop them down there? What's your, what's your throw skill? Or, uh, well, before we do that, I mean, consider this. Yeah, we don't we want to be set up We haven't tipped anybody design. that we're here yet, so if we're... Right, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I say oh. we back out and explore the rest of this cavern. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's go over here and clear this, clear it over here on this side. Yeah, we, we, we leave. We don't, we can come back to this if we need to. Right? Yeah. Slimy hole. Yep. All right. And Bear's kind of, you know, making a mental you know, note of all this stuff, it's navigation for later. At the southern tip of this cavern down here, you see another hole. This one's a bit larger than the first one. It's just a, a gaping black hole in the floor of the cavern leading down. And you can see signs of some of this dark greenish slime all over the walls back behind um, and around the edge um, of this tunnel mouth in this pit or the mouth of the pit. And you can kind of see faint traces of slime along the edge of it and on the wall behind it. There's also are we there. are we constantly going down like this is a drain like it goes lower and lower or is no, it 
it, it's fairly level down here. Okay. You, you haven't really sensed that you've gone down or up. And there's also another passageway to the south here that looks like it leads into another small chamber. Let's take a peek in there. Sure. Yep, we'll go in there. All right. This is pretty interesting. You guys see the first signs of habitation in this small chamber. On one wall, there's a wooden rack. It looks like it contains strips of what appear to be dried meat. Um, also, on the opposite wall, you see some uh, hooks, metal hooks that have been screwed into the wall. And hanging on these hooks, you see these strange looking metallic devices. Um, they're kind of small. Uh, the central part of the device has this globular glass looking globe that contains this silvery liquid. And uh, where is it here? Is it like the gun the father and them encountered? Yep. Yeah, I don't think That's any. Exactly what it is. Yeah, it's their armory, part of their weapons. Yep. Yeah, it's made of this bluish crystal-like material, and it kind of gleams very strangely in your in your light. It has a twisted hand grip, and a large blister of purple-veined blue glass surmounting the hand grip, with six thin rods of silvery hue projecting forward from the device. It's like it seems to form some sort of barrel. How, how many are there? Two. And they're hanging on these metal hooks. Well, we take them. Okay. Um, Lee, give me a uh, medicine roll. And uh, yeah. Cal, you can make a natural world roll. You can too, Tom. If you have, I don't think you have any natural world, but I think you have at least 10, maybe. Let's see. I did not make it. I was close. Well, let's just say... Uh, these strips of meat that are hanging in the wall, they're a good three feet long. Some of them, some of them are kind of smaller strips. But Bear, you don't recognize this meat. It's like jerky. It appears to be some sort of dried jerky. It does not appear to be meat of any animal. The human. People jerky. This jerky out of people, people. Anything else in this room? We search the walls for secret trap doors, passageways, hidden bookshelves, all that. In the southwest corner of this chamber, Tom, mm -hmm. you, you notice. Um, sort of a hollow thud as you step on the ground back here and you kind of clear some of the, the rubble and rocks and it looks like there's a, a thin piece of wood Ooh. on the floor in here. Mm -hmm. I gently sweep the dirt away and I find the edges and I lift it up. Yeah, it looks like a piece of wood about three feet by three feet. And you get your finger up underneath the the edge of the wood. And, and Bear, you hear Bear behind you. He goes, oh, oh. <laughs> I stop. What did I do wrong? Not only are these serpent people evil, but they're also terrible carpenters. 
I open it. Got a thorn, it you almost got a thorn in your finger. It, it looks like a scrap. You know, it's not perfectly square or anything. It looks like a scrap of wood from somewhere. You lift <laughs> it open. You lift up the board, and underneath there's this hollow area dug into the rock, kind of roughly and crudely. And sitting at the bottom of this small hole, you see what appears to be something wrapped up in this dark burlap <laughs> cloth. Ooh. I pick it up and I gently, carefully. You reach down and get your hands on this object. It feels like it has a, some heft to it. It's very heavy, whatever it is. I don't unwrap it yet, I do, but I do pick it, it up. Bent and... over, reaching down there. It's a couple feet deep. You're having trouble actually lifting out of there. It's so heavy. I'll, I'll help him. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I say, hey, man. So, Bear, in order to get some leverage, you kind of have to put one foot down there, you know, to get a hold of the, the cloth. And both, the of other you, piece of the and, disc? Both of, and both of you lift it up out of the hole and set it down with a thud on the ground. Whatever's in there, it's very heavy. At least you have a piece of the disc, man. At least like 100 pounds. Wow. I bet I it is know. the other part of the disc. And that's where we'll end the session. Oh. oh. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good game, guys. That was good. Yeah. Right. Our island crew is going to have to figure out what this disc is, man. That's going to be the number one priority. All right. Well, well, that's mean. Let's okay. So, so you, so, so, so Blackwood, you kind of like start unfolding this cloth, and you, you see the glimmer of gold. All right. Let's just put it that way. All right. And, uh, Excellent. And as you uncover it, you see, indeed, you have found the third piece of the relay disc. Oh. Excellent. Mm. This is bigger than killing any snake people. Yep. Just get the we went the right here. direction. And that's when the dogs start barking. Oh, yeah. uh, I, you know, I was just going to say the dog saved us from going down the wrong path. I was Otis, just about to say that. Otis starts going nuts and he's pointing out the passageway from where you guys came in. Oh, dude. Uh, and then Thug still follows. This elephant gun down the, down the hallway takes a nice even bead for whatever shows its ugly face first. Lock and load. Boom! It evaporates. Boom! It evaporates. <laughs> awesome. All right. All right, fellas. Thank you, gentlemen. Nice, nice work. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. Right. Yeah, Sean. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to play with the new new crew here. This is going to be awesome. Good luck. Wait till next week. All right. I'll see you guys next time. All right. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night.